Atletico, they've proven themselves that they're still the best of the best here. But we're into our second series so far. Welcome back here to the ESL AU and NZ Championships. The season four time, I'll be your host yet again, CNC. I'm joined by Walgott, mate. That was an interesting show there by Atletico, but now we're into our second one. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty surgical, pretty clean game. And we've seen one finalist now. Now it's time to see if Zen 9 can back up their finalist run from last season and... Honestly, it, it's looking solid. They've been looking pretty good in other tournaments. We've talked about them practicing. I think Darksiders might have their work cut out for them to take some games today. Yeah, Darksiders are really going to have to set up, step up and show that this top three form does carry through into the next season. But you know, Darksiders, they're looking pretty good. You know, Reverie's starting to clean it up. Biausu's really doing, you know, settling into that role, kind of second fiddle to Reverie. But I mean, Z9, they've all been really good players. They've all been really good teams in these recent tournaments. Who do you think is going to be the linchpin here for Z9 today? I mean, I was going to say EJ was going to be the linchpin, but he will not be attending game one. Unfortunately, he's not able to play game one. So they've got Buzzkin coming in, well-known Oz player. And that means the linchpin has to be Bala. It has to be all on Bala to pick a nice stable core that he can fight in the mid game, that he can set the pace and he can win these team fights for them. Yeah, and as we have a quick look here at our bracket Atletico, we're able to take out 2-0 against Shutdown, so they move a little bit forward here. So that means they only need to win one more best of three here to try and put themselves into the playoffs. Send 9 going up against Darksided here. The winner will be joining Atletico in the upper bracket. Loser will be going down to that loser's bracket. And Z9 versus Darksided. This is going to be that close one. This is going to be a lot closer than uh, the Shutdown one, considering well, let's Shutdown... let's hope so. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's hope so. Well, Shutdown, yeah. they did have two uh, stand-ins here, and Z9, they're going to be running one stand-in. So as you said, Ball is going to have to try and step up here for Zen 9 who do you think is going to be the linchpin for Darksided, though? I mean, it's always musical, almost always. Yep. Like, Reverie plays a pretty solid game. He's very fantastic in the mid as a stable stable linchpin for that. But music is the hero that he really sets the early game, and then he runs into the mid game and makes his team play around him so often. And that's why we saw yesterday, he got six banned. That's six true. heroes banned against him. And even then, he still looked good. And that just shows the amount of respect that people have for Musica as the shot caller. He doesn't do the draft anymore. I think Tobbs does that now, but he just does so much for this team. He is vital. Yeah, it does feel like that Musica needs to, to kind of stand up in that offlane. We do see that with Atletico to Teco to some extent. You know, Teco has a good game, Atletico has a good game. And I feel like Darksided's kind of similar in that regard. You know, Musica makes quite a lot of space for Reverie. They yeah. put him on heroes like the OD. They put him on heroes like the Alchemist, even the Storm Spirit to a certain extent where he's able to come in. He's able to tear these teams apart. And if Darksided can get themselves in solid situations where... Um, a Reverie has a very good matchup, and then Music is making space on top of that. That's when they can look really dominant. But Zen 9, in the same regards, you know, Buzkin, he's a player that has been kind of. I don't want to say infamous, but he's he's been around a lot of these players, a lot yeah. on their streams, on his own stream as well. He plays quite a lot of mid, and he's quite good as well. So Reverie's really got his work cut out for him today. Yeah, I mean, he is a land winner now. He's, <laughs> uh, he's the land. I'm surprised his name isn't still land winner. He held that for about a two-week period where he won that uh, Queensland tournament. Yep. Um, he's riding that high a bit a bit too much, some might say, but he is a very well-respected player. He is fantastic in the mid lane. Some of his heroes are absolutely infamous. His Storm Spirit is one of them that everyone is quite scared of. They they respect it enough. I wouldn't be surprised if they get spanned on in the second phase. What about the Morphling as well? You know, that's a hero that has, he has been playing quite a lot. He is quite high level in both those heroes, the Storm Spirit as well as the Morphling. But that Storm Spirit will be... I feel like quite highly contested between both these teams, right? Obviously, we've got the uh, the Riz Pango getting taken out already. You have to ban that pretty much every to, single time. The Spirit Breaker getting taken out from Dark Side as well, and just getting rid of the Chen and the Shadow uh, the, the Sand King. There still is a Dark here. There still is the Oracle. But neither of these teams played at the same level that shut down and Atletico. Atletico will pick both of those heroes every single game if they're allowed to. Same as the Sand King with Teko. He just loves that hero too much. It's too strong in his opinion. Where neither of these sides have that like. We will pick this. We don't care what you do mentality. Where they, They'll try to change it up game to game. They'll try to counter pick each other. Darkseid had probably been practicing drafts to beat Zen 9 since the beginning of the season. They thought this game was going to come and I'd like to see what they've got prepped. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how Darkseid come out on top of a team like Zen 9 who are 
I feel like they work really well as a five-man unit. You know, they get Bala on one of these kind of aggressive heroes, you know, the Juggernaut or the Razor, if he wants to play those heroes, and even the Wraith King to a certain extent. And they kind of just run around as this ball, but Dark Side, they're going to go for Warlock. a Warlock. A hero Ooh. that we saw quite a lot yesterday and did quite a lot of work yesterday as well. Yeah, almost too many games we've seen Warlock. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it's picked first. We were talking about the model, complaining about it. It's first, it's on the left, it's far away. Um, but in-game, it's one of those heroes that just creates so much space. The the fear, I'm going to say, of the golem just dropped on your head is massive. The bonds do so much damage if you're not prepped for them. And the Shadow Ward's pretty good, just for keeping the lane stable. It's one of the strongest heals in the game. It does about 500 health, max level. And that's nothing to scoff at. But on the other side, you've got the Omni Knight. Very I mean, similar to roll. We saw that hero do quite a lot of work yesterday with that Heavenly Grace. It allows you to play a lot more aggressive in a lane. It allows you to, to be a little bit more frivolous with your BKBs and, and you know items of the like. We're being able to purge that off. But is this a hero that can really deal with the Warlock? I guess you don't have to worry about the Golem's Fiery Fist. Get rid of the Bonds. Yeah, that's, that is true. It is a strong bit dispel. Gets rid of those uh, those bonds straight away. But this does leave, you know, we've seen this uh, Omni Knight as a positive five. It does leave you a bit lacking in the stuns. Does this need, mean that uh, Ball is going to have to pick up something with a little bit of a stun, a little bit more aggression in the I line? mean, I'd be fine picking it as a pause four, but I think that's the very early pickup for Ball up there. They know he's probably going to get binned on the picks when it comes down to it. We've seen what happens. Atletico especially does this. They'll just ban five Bala heroes. They don't care. They'll just make sure he has a rough game. I think Zen 9 are starting to learn this. They're starting to realize that if Roger, Dodger, and Riz get some of their really famous heroes, it's fantastic. And you can play around that more than you have to rely on Bala. We talked about it. He's, he's spreading out his hero pool. He's getting better at more things. Baller is and spreading his wings. If he's happy to early pick a troll wallet and it still looks good, that's a huge buff for a team. Yeah, that is true. Well, it looks like Dark Souls are going to go back to the age-old adage of the Warlock and the Spectre dual lane. It allows you to play a little bit more aggressive in the lane. The Spectre is a hero that you need to create a lot of space for. And we saw Bowser yesterday. He did a lot of work on that Spectre. Even when Reverie did take a backseat to him, he was able to come in really clutch with that uh, Radiance and was able to take over the game easily for yeah. Dark Side. How, how do you try and deal with this, though, if you're Zen 9? Uh, the most brainless combo since Morphling Earthshaker, apparently. Um... <laughs> The best way to combo it is setting a fast-paced, lots of fighting team. Because both those cooldowns, Spectre Ultimate Horn is 140 seconds, goes down to 120 at max level. That's still really long. And obviously the Golem is two and a half minutes. Yeah. If you can find a team that can fight every 40 seconds, and sure, you lose the first team fight, you respawn, you go again. You take a Roche Band, you take a Tier 2, maybe start pushing towards the Tier 3s when they haven't got their ultimates up, because we've seen how much damage the Golem does on the high ground. That's the way to go around it. Just a fast-paced lineup. Yeah, well, we'll have to see if said no, I do pick up the pace here. I feel like Troll Wallet is probably one of those heroes that can play a little bit fast-paced, right? You get oh, something like an yeah. early Diffusal Blade going to BKB, maybe even Sanji and Yasha early on. Might be able to put a little bit of pressure on, on the lineups, but Dark Sided. <sighs> I'm just trying to think of like the Zen 9 fours that they could play here for Roger Dodger. Obviously, Shatan is quite good when it comes to things like the Shadow Shaman. He has played quite a lot of Omni Knight as well. I wouldn't mind recently. seeing like you play the Omni Knight as a four. Maybe even a five, you pick something like a Phoenix yep. for Roger Dodger if you're not playing the Omni Knight 4. And then Riz can basically just pick whatever he wants on this offline. Yep. He does play um, like some pretty scary heroes, right? He can pick things like the Slada, which is very strong. He can pick heroes like uh, even the Centaur, which is quite strong yeah. against something like a, a Spectre. And as you said, if Roger Dodger just plays one of these aggressive kind of fours around Riz, then they can start putting a lot of pressure on, on, on Dark Side because... They're kind of relying on this Warlock Spectre to do their own thing. So they're going to put a lot more pressure on the mid as well as the other off lane. Yeah, and you can see the, the bans for Dark Side are very targeted. They're yep. both mid lane bans. They they realize whatever we try to ban in the off lane, they'll have something. Like Riz has got a couple heroes. Roger has got a couple aggressive heroes. So they're just going to throw Buzzkin under the bus. <laughs> or well, or he... Charter, I should say. That's his name in lobby. And <laughs> <laughs> I'll forget that three times over. I'm, I'm going to say Buzzkin. I'm going to say Buzzkin. Um it also does feel like this is kind of what you need to do when you have standings on a team, right? Because if you have a stand you're going to try and make them play as comfortable as possible. Of you course, want to put yeah. them into a position where they know what they're going to do. They've played this game a hundred times in pubs. They understand when they need to rotate. They understand when they are strong. And if you force a hero, uh, force a player like the mid laner to be on something that's uncomfortable, then it kind of dismantles quite a lot, yeah. a lot that Zen9 needs to do. Especially someone like Buzzkin, who's renowned for three heroes. He's not renowned for 30. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not, it's not the same. He doesn't have a complete hero puddle. He does play other things but it's just one of those like there's a caliber of hero that's yep. just way above everything else yep. and that we've talked about Storm the Morphling his Viper's pretty good they banned them all yep. but even the Arc Warden ban 
seems a bit odd because I'm not sure Reverie can play that hero very well, and I've seen Bowser play it, and it leaves a lot to be desired. Well, I believe uh, Baller was talking about this on his stream. You, you ban out Reverie's Arc Warden, and you feel pretty good about it. Yeah. So apparently he does seem to play it quite well. It looks like the Crystal Maiden is a pick up here for Roger Dodger. A hero that is an aggressive four that Roger Dodger plays quite a lot. And he plays it quite greedily too, yep. which is fine to see. Like, If you can get levels on Crystal Maiden, you're actually enabling the team too because that mana regen is fantastic. It also enables that fast-paced fighting like we were talking about. A lot of the heroes that like fighting in the mid-game run low on mana. CM sorts that problem out and you just keep going. You just keep fighting. These cooldowns are down. You keep taking these towers. Keep going for these Roshans. And that's that's what Zen 9 are looking to do. Yeah, well, we'll have to see how Dark Soda respond to this Crystal Maiden pause floor because I've seen this hero with Freezing Field. If they've only got physical damage, it's quite hard for you to deal with something like a Crystal Maiden, especially yeah. once she gets that BKB. If you get that Freezing Field off, you've got plus 20 armor on top of this already kind of squishy hero. You know, you build into those braces, you get a little bit tankier, and that Freezing Field can be quite annoying for a lot of these heroes to try and get through. But the Nyx Assassin is the response here from Dark Sided. So, Tobbs. I mean, actually, it was Xavier who was playing this uh, Nyx Assassin the other day, right? Where he was playing... He was doing really well with uh, another setup sum from Musica. Yeah, that, that was a... It was a questionable lane to look to look at, but it worked out pretty well. And it was also a great counter to Crystal Maiden and also a good counter to Omni Knight. You try to set up this Garden of the Angel fight, try to set up Freezing Field. Carapace just ruins that. Freezing Field yep. instantly gets stopped as soon as one shard hits him. And that's perfect. Remaining. It was N9. They are... They do need their... Off lane here. I feel like you're probably going to pick Rizzo's hero right here, right now. I think you should. You've got Buzzkin on the mid lane. You don't really want to get him counterpicked. You have the last pick. He's a pretty nice final picker cheese strat. Um, it, for Riz, you just need a pace setting hero. Something like a Beastmaster would be nice. Centaur's pretty good. Like, it's got to have a stun. It's got to have a bit of mid game fight potential. Yep. And it can't get bodied out of lane. They're, they're just the three things you need. There's probably a heal of about nine yep. that he could pick. It all depends on how Z9 want to play this. I feel like Centaur would be best for them. It allows them to have a little bit of a disengage with that Stampede. As you said, he doesn't really get uh, bullied out of lane all too yeah. much and really sets up quite nice from the Frostbite from Crystal Maiden. Yeah. You know, her being able to keep either the Spectre or the Warlock in lane means that the Centaur can get on top for the Who Stomp and then the Retaliate kills from there. And it allows them to play a little bit more pace as well. They get the Blink Dagger. Grimstroke. Oh, I like that. Well, Riz is a Grimstroke spammer. Yeah. The thing is, though, they've left it open. Is that a pause 3 Omni Knight? Riz can play it. I mean, I would prefer to see the Omni Knight in the pause three and then the Grim Strike going towards that pause five. Shatan no. can play that as well. And then it's oh dear, the yeah. Reverie, Reverie. Reverie, this lineup is looking strikingly familiar. I'm not sure where <laughs> it's from. <laughs> I'm I pretty mean, sure they played these exact four heroes yeah. yesterday. Uh, what was the fifth hero? Uh, Lena, that was. That yeah. was the last one. Ooh. Was it a last pick, Lena, too? It was, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dark Side of it. Someone with stole it their notes, ripped them up, and be like, you know what? I'll go off memory. <laughs> <laughs> Let's run it back, boys. It worked once. Can it work twice? So we'll have to see what Z9 decide to ban out here. They understand that this OD is going to be going mid for Reverie. They understand that Bowser is going to be picking up that Spectre, so they need to get rid of a Musica hero. Is there anything that's kind of left here for Musica? Maybe the Mars would be a quite good ban. They're going to get rid of the Panda instead. Yeah, I mean, the Brewmaster is another one of those cooldown-dependent heroes, but that is fantastic to fight against Troll Warlord. That Miss Chance is insane. Yeah, Troll Warlord has to hit you. It doesn't have to land. <laughs> you can just keep swinging and missing over and over again, and there's just nothing you can do about it. And that's the Buzzkin Meepo band oh. out here. We are talking about him. It's his three heroes. The Storm, the Morphling, and the Meepo. They're all going here. So Buzzkin can't get out of cheesy little win here for Zen 9. He's still got Queen of Pain. Um, that's is that playable good enough against, against OD? OD? The thing is, that he can't really die to the rest of their lineup. Like, Astral into Nick's stun is currently all they have. Yep. Um, he does play it quite a bit. I think he'd be comfortable on it. He yep. needs a hero that is quite comfortable. And he's got the Omni Knight back up. Um, it's the big thing. Oh! <laughs> no way! <laughs> okay, I was joking that they are going to pick a leader. But nope. They liked that run. They want to see how it fares against a team that might be a bit stronger. Like, when they picked it yesterday, truth be told... It was against a weaker team. It was against yep. a, quite a weaker team. Yep. Zen 9 are very strong. And it looks... It looks solid. Bowser yep. got what he wanted. Reverie had a fantastic exactly. start to the game. And obviously, Warlock and Nyx are just great heroes. Yep. They're well-rounded. They do everything exceptionally well. And they don't get blown up. And that's the big thing with supports. If they don't get blown up completely, that's a win. Well, we'll have to see if Zen9 
went back to their VOD review and were able to see how Darkseid would play this lane because this is literally the exact same five heroes they played yesterday in their first game against Infinity yeah. Gaming. So I mean, can the big thing get on is top? the lanes have to be the same. You can't you can't switch it out and play OD as a carry spec to mid, right? That just can't yeah, happen. That, that just you can't play really the OD off. in the off lane. So you know it's going to be a pos 3 slash 4 Nyx Lena and Queen of Pain. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure oh, you're almost oh, 10 oh, heroes oh, there, except oh. for the baller troll wallet. I think, I think you're pretty much on top. I didn't really guess. Like, we were talking about Bala having a small hero pool yep. expanding. I didn't I didn't even have a prediction of what he was going to pick. <laughs> I just said, troll looks good. Yeah, well, it looks like Zen 9. They do pick the Queen of Pain here for Buzzkin. We're able to play a little bit more aggressive with this hero, and it will be a Black Shatan Crystal Maiden and a Roger Dodger Grimstroke. Is this a strong enough lane with the uh, Omni Knight and the Grimstroke to put pressure on Warlock's uh, Spectre? Well, Inkswell with the... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but the movement speed slow on Omni Knight's E is... Uh, DJ Nora. DJ, oh, that's a boring name. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so the DJ Nora and the Inkswell are really good just to run at someone. And obviously, it's going to be against a quite slow hero inspector until he gets that dagger off. It's a decent cooldown. So a 14 second cooldown on the, on the dagger. So there's going to be a decent window where they can actually just abuse that and run at him, have all that health regen from Omni Knight, have the Inkswell on the back, have that silence on the Warlock if they want. And they'll probably get a few kills in this lane. Yeah, we'll have to see how Zen9 do play their lane. Could they go for an aggressive try lane with Warlock, Crystal Maiden, and Grimstroke and leave Omni in a 1v1? They definitely could. That's it. Like, Roger, Dodger, and Shatan are pretty solid supports, yep. and they play try lanes well. The problem is, Bala, we've seen him in try lanes. He always looks so rough. Yeah. I'm not sure how well they've practiced the try yep. lane, but now might not be the time to try it. I okay. think to, trying it against a weaker team would be the best option. Yeah. No, well, it looks like we're going to be getting into our 52 in a row. Oh, someone plays a lot of uh, unranked five stacks. <laughs> All right, Riz. Um, I mean, I've played with him quite a bit too. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> so Zen 9 up against Dark Side here. The winner will be facing off against Athletico for a slot in the playoffs. Loser will go down to the loser's bracket and we'll be playing off against Flashpoint. Who are we picking here? Honestly... I've seen Darksiders draft before. I know how it's going to work. I think Zen 9 are going to do a bit better than yesterday yep. about how to deal with it. I'm going to go Zen 9 slightly. Slightly. I feel like if Buzzkin can start getting out on top of Revery, because as you said, we saw this draft yesterday. We saw exactly what they're going to do. They're going to make sure oh, that Revery has a good seen lane. would have seen that. Oh, he's sitting here. Yeah, he does get the ping out. So Revery does understand that there will be a ward there. He did this exact same thing yesterday as well. So I think Darkseid are like, all right, boys, it's time to just repeat what oh, we did I yesterday. I like that. He's quite a fast hero. 314 for a mid lane is quite fast. And you're obviously comparing it to the CM who is... 277. I think the second slowest hero in the game. Yeah, I think she is. To yeah. Treon Protector? Is Treon or Venno? I, I thought... Or maybe Viper. I think Viper might be like one of the slowest heroes in the game. Yeah. Between those... he Definitely bottom five. Yeah. I, I, I think second could be fourth. Um... But it's just great because now all of a sudden you get that oh, free D ward. We saw this happen before. The impel comes in from Xavier. They have the light strike array on top from Musica. Tobbs wants to come in and throw out those auto attacks, but Baller taking so much damage here early on. He has to burn his salve before the runes even spawn. You can see here that they've already traded two runes though. So they've come down here, Roger Dodger, Riz, and Buzzkin are all down here. They're prepped and ready. They got that ward down that definitely won't get spotted. And it's a nice ward because it sees the pull. And it also sees a slight bit of rotation early if you're fighting for this pull. Um, maybe maybe not as good as like having a normal traditional ward, something around here, something blocking the camp. But you can see Roger Dodge is just going to physically block the camp. Yep. They're trying to make sure that Biasi doesn't have the best of starts. We saw in that oh, last and he game. blocks it anyway. So, oh, all right. so he's just getting a late block. So it looks like now Riz on this Omni Knight with the Roger Dodger Grimstroke. They can start putting the pressure on. I've seen Omni Knights before when they get quite a lot of farm this offlane. They go for the phase glitch. They go for something like a mech, Guardian Greaves, even just the Crimson Guard. And they just become this absolute beef tank. They just walk forward. They run in with that big hammer. They throw out some purifications. They put a Heavenly Grace on their core and off they pop. And I think Troll Warlord with a Heavenly Grace is going to be quite hard to deal with in this mid game. They don't yeah. have the longest of stuns, right? I mean, as well as that, he can't die in the ultimate as he is. And having that extra health regen is going to be insane. Because he that extra strength is going to add up, and he's just going to start wailing on someone. They are already putting the pressure here out on the bow. So the mid lane's going quite well here for Buzzkin as well. 4 and 0 got up against the 3 and 2, but you know, this is how we were expecting this lane to go, pretty much. Yeah, I find this quite strange. So they, he saw the ward being placed, and yet he never asked for the sentry. Maybe he's, wait, maybe he's bringing out his own sentry, because they are quite cheap now. That's that's the thing. Like, we'll see on the courier, but I don't think he is. Yeah, he hasn't. Okay. So he saw the D ward, that potential, didn't take it. And it's a, it's an extra bit of XP. It's a bit of gold. 
Like, you almost double your money on what you buy the Sentry for, so it's definitely worth it. Well, it looks like bottom lane. Bowser is taking quite a lot of damage, but so is Roger Dodger. Coming in, trading right clicks with the Omni Knight. Bowser feels okay with this, though, because they have the Shadow Word from top. This is, this is exactly why you pick Warlock Spectre, right? Because Spectre comes in, she brawls, she throws out a few daggers, and then the Warlock yeah. comes in with the Shadow Word. It's just so hard to do, especially when you get that Dispersion. This is before Dispersion now. It's the one level, of course, but... It's just one of those things, it just makes the lane super easy. Anything to enable your carry to get farm without actually dying is just what you need. And you can see, Bowser's going to probably sit on high health regen, still got the Sauv, still got the Tango. Warlock is running low on mana though, so Tobbs is probably going to have to be a bit safe, get that clarity off, and just hope for the best in the lane. Oh, these lanes are looking fairly passive from now, but I think a lot of these lanes do need a few more levels until they start getting kills, right? You know, the Music is Xavier lane, they're going to need to start getting a few more levels in that Light Strike Rays, a few more levels in that Impel when they can start pressuring out, you know, something like Crystal Maiden or even the Troll Warlord, yeah. so... The big thing is, though, Music is 13-1. and one. Like, he's getting the farm up here in a lane that we've seen can be a real struggle for the early game. Like, last time we saw it played, he got absolutely bodied for the first three, four minutes. That is true. He was also getting tri in that lane, in that game as well. And That's true. Yeah, and yeah, and CM team. is not fantastic level one, level two. You can see here the mana regen is just so hard to deal with. You really need that level in Frostbite as well. Yeah, well, Paul is taking quite a lick of damage here from the Lena. These lanes are going fairly swimmingly here for Darkseid. All three of their cores sitting very high up. The only one that is in between them is Riz on that Omni Knight. Bila does get himself up there as well, so... Both lanes, all lanes looking quite well. Who do, where do we think this uh, first one's going to come? I, I, I feel it's like it's got to come up here. I, I don't think mid mid has to be a huge mistake from either player. It, this is the stun lane. This is the high DPS lane. And you can see how much damage just comes out. They're all sitting on half health or lower, except for Bala, who has just committed so much regen for this lane. I, you, you have to. Well, right? And we're wrong. Oh. It's bot lane. <laughs> So it looks like Riz is the one that first picks up the kill here, takes out Bowser himself. So he's going to get a very early phase boots here on this Omni Knight. Once that Sol Ring comes up as well, it's going to be quite hard for them to try and deal with this lane. And this is what happens with Warlock Spectre. Yeah, it is quite good in the sustain, but as soon as you have all that burst damage coming out from the Stroke Effect, coming out from the Purification, yeah. Bowser so really I think can't regen. Two levels in Inkswell, I don't think Bowser was ready for it. He had the dagger on cooldown when they fought and just didn't wasn't re prepped and ready for the two levels of Purification as well. He just got pumped. Yeah, they're taking quite a little bit more damage here. Riz is going to come forward with the purification. Gets himself a range creep. Look at that top damage. He's damage. on half health again. And Tobbs, that's his last heal. He's going to have to commit the magic stick for the next one. Well, these lanes are looking fairly even coming across the map. Reverie's doing decently well here against Buzzkin. 16 and 8 against the 14 and 6. So both mid laners doing fairly well when it comes to the last hit sends and eyes. Yeah, Reverie should ca get a bit of a lead here just because the Astral's so solid for that. Like, you can see here oh. how much damage he's taking. He's doing he a lot of damage to Buzzkin. Does have the Fairy Fire on top, so Buzzkin wasn't in too much danger of going down. Oh, Bouse! Oh, he used the Soul Ring there. He copped the Purification in the face as well. I think if they had that Ink Swell, they might have committed for that and just gone for the kill. Instead, now you've got Tobbs is probably going to get killed here because you see Buzzkin's rotating. He's... He's oh, he wants Bowser. the Bowser kill. A few more auto attacks, and they will be able to take out the Spectre. They do with the Inkswell tick. So Buzzkin gets himself the first kill from the rotation of the five minute runes. Tobbs is the next one on the list. He's a warlock. He's slow. He's getting hit with the dagger as well. And Buzzkin gets himself a double kill. They secure themselves some bounty runes as well. Musica gets the top one. Riz gets the bottom ones. So yeah, a fantastic be a three for regen one. rune for Buzzkin coming in, getting that kill. He's gone the three levels in Shadow Strike as well. He's realised that they can just chase anyone to their heart's content. The stuns can come from someone else. He doesn't need to actually just blow someone up. Yeah, Reverie. It was a nice little use of the fortification, but Buzz can take quite a lot of damage. Has to blink himself away. We saw this in the in the, the last game where uh, Reverie played this OG. Bala? Bala? Getting fairly low. He was Three, trying to contest four, nine. the room. I think he... Oh, oh he's going to leave no, Shatan to die. He got hit by the impel. They have the Dragon Slave and the LSA on top, and so much range from Musica. The Fire Sister beats out the Ice Sister. And Dark Sider, they're looking... Fairly decently in its offlane. I think this is going to have to become a staple for this team. A lot of teams are going to have to be worried about this Lena Nyx Assassin combination because Mizuki is making it look good. It's strange because you look at this lineup, you're like, all right, it's, it's two stuns, but they'll run out of mana. But they're somehow holding it together. Xavier, like, he's just rushing that arcane boots. Musica with that bottle and the wand is just, it's keeping them in enough sustain to keep out this, per like, this absolute spam. Like now, they have secured themselves quite a lot of lanes as well. So, Music is doing pretty well in the last hit department. Ball is doing not bad himself. 28 and 2 here on the Troll Warlord. What, what type of item build would you like to see Bala go for here? 
I think he doesn't have to do anything special. Obviously, the face boots is is the go, and then I think he needs to tank up a bit, so maybe something like a drum would be nice. Maybe two or three Wraith Bands. I wouldn't even be a rider saying he gets one Bracer, to be honest. Just that extra health regen, they've got a lot of bursts in this lane, you need to be able to get your ultimate off. This is the magic of this too, because as we can see across the entirety of Dark Tide, they rely quite heavily on their magic damage. Oh, definitely for sure. Um, he he is definitely. I think he, this this is here is going to be yeah. It's that's completed. Oh, there. Roger Dodger gets yet another kill here on Biasu, and we're talking about this Dark Side of Draft. They gave Biasu a very free lane in that first game, but now Riz as well as Roger Dodger are putting him to the sword, and Riz is doing really well in this Omni Knight, sitting at the top of the net worth. I'd imagine top of the uh, the top of the CS and top of the net worth. I'd imagine. Yeah, he's yeah. he's quite a chubby boy, but on the other side. The other offlane music, he's doing pretty well as well. Nothing to scoff at. 2.7k. He's beating Buzzkin in the mid. He's absolutely dominating his own mid lane. Um, which is surprising, because you look at the last hits, you'd think it'd be going a bit better for OD, but... Well, all the rotation from Xavier gets themselves a stun here out onto the Omni Knight, but that's a solo kill there for Buzzkin. Taking out Reverie in that mid lane. I'll sort of kill as soon as he hits that level 6, and they're trying to get the kill on the Omni Knight, but he's so gosh on tanky. Yeah, that's that's the power of Quop. You can see here, four levels in that, got the Sonic Wave. He would have just kept harassing him down, waited till he was about 500 health, and just jumped and insta-Sonic Waved him. Nice kill there from Oh, and Buzz he gets the region as well. Musica is just sitting here with no mana, and he has to TP, yeah. So there's no way of stopping that TP from Buzzkin, so Musica gets himself back to the base, over a teaching himself back to the T1 tower, and Z9, they're starting to, to encroach a lead, right? They've got 3k net worth already, and these heroes can just start keep putting on the pressure, right? You know, Z9 don't really have to wait for cooldowns. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we could see mid a gank here. If they get the Astral off, maybe not. They've just given up completely. It's going to be hard to kill him. For Z9, like, it's showing their prowess in lanes. Like They've always been renowned for being fantastic laners, fantastic mechanical heroes with high knowledge. And it's showing, like even with Riz, quite a new addition, he's bodying this lane. And oh. Tobbs can't do anything, he just dies here. Yeah, Tobbs is getting caught out by the Inks well, and the run out from Riz, the purification is one that gets the kill. Z9 putting themselves five kills ahead early on here. It's only eight minutes in. They're doing extremely well. You know, Ball is the one that's getting kind of ran at, but he's still sitting nice on the net worth. You know, he's more than happy with how this game is going. Yeah, you got to give props to Barla. He's getting bodied in this lane, but he's found a way to find farm. 46 and 9. He's still beating Musica on the lane. He's probably going to get another 100 gold off the wave if he gets a few of these. He's doing fantastic for himself. He's doing nice when it comes to the last hits apartment. Reverie's just going to have to relegate himself to the jungle because he realises that he can't actually stay in this lane against uh, Buzzkin, especially with that Sonic Wave coming back off cooldown very soon. Well, it's all like those daggers are doing so much damage. You saw him, he was on 400 health farming this, and it goes down to 200 by the time he finishes farming. They weren't from the creeps, that was just from the Shadow Points on the dagger. Well, the drums is coming out now onto Riz. Is this when they start combining together? You know, Buzzkin is, looks like he's going to start connecting towards that bottom side. They're just going to keep pressuring out Baosu, trying to I make think, sure that he I doesn't think he's have looking for Baosu, but Baosu's quite a tanky hero. He hasn't got six yet, though, so if Buzzkin finds him, he could die. Buzzkin he thinks better of it. He doesn't want to dive all too hard. The Inkswell comes out, but Xavier gets the stun with the spike character. So Light Tracker 8 hits onto Shatan, but Ball is the one that sidesteps that. Xavier, beautiful impale though. It's on the two of these heroes. Buys himself a little bit of space, but the slow comes in from the stroke of fate. Can Ball find him? He does get him with the range yeah, axes. All over. the range in the world. Shatan, picking himself up another kill. Xavier was a little bit too far out now. Is this starting to get out of the reach of, of Darksided? Obviously, they have the Spectre, but... It's definitely getting out of control in the early game. They need to reset, slow it down. They've got the Shadow... Like, they've got the Warlock. They've got the Spectre combo. Obviously, with the OD, we saw how much damage that can do with the Bonds. And they're just getting jumped on top. What comes in. They do get the uh, the Inkswell stunned, but he doesn't want to dive underneath this tower with the rotation from Musica. Shatan is here as well. Providing quite a lot of damage. The Sonic Wave comes Musica. in, but it's not enough damage. Buzzkin, you need to get another blink forward. Beautiful LSA comes in with a haunt on top. How much damage can they do? They take out Buzzkin. They want Shatan as well. Can they get him? No, they get Roger instead. And this looks like the Crystal Maiden will be able to walk away from a fight. They eventually get the Musica kill. But, I mean, that's not exactly what they want. That's actually what they needed for Darksided, though. A nice rotation on, on Musica. He does die, but he gets everything he can off. He makes sure Buzzkin dies. He makes sure Grimstroke dies, which Roger was having a pretty cruisy game before that. Uh, they almost lost Riz on the bot lane, too. That would have been the disaster if they lost two different fights. And oh, Well, that's just a Shatan kill. So, Biasu, after using that first taunt, gets himself a double kill, gets himself a third here in the mid lane. So, he's on the killing spree now. He's going to have those treads up. Is it going to be phase or treads? Probably treads, right? Um, I'm not sure. I think phase, but let's see on the courier. Nah, it's treads. treads. Yep. 
I, got, I mean, he, he needs, needs to, to tank up. He, he needs yeah. to tank up a lot. He's not worried about the armor as much because there's a lot of magic damage coming out of Zen 9. The only real physical is Bala. And he's going to start to skyrocket on this farm now that he's got a few more levels in everything he has. And the double whirling axes is really quick for farming. You can see here, he's not scared. He's not taking any damage at all. Oh, Paula. It's getting going on here by Xavier. He has a spike arrow. They do start up the Crystal Maiden. Light Truck Ray should be coming through soon for Musica. Doesn't throw it out, so they're just going to walk themselves away. Gentlemen's agreement. Say, so see you later, boys. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's still fine. You got all the last hits. Shatan snaked the big ones, but that's still fine. You get it on Zen 9. You make sure you get the farm and not Musica. Ah. Um, and they really can't push against that Shatan burst. You can see he's maxed it. He's completely maxed Crystal Nova. He knows what he needs to do. He needs to be able to clear waves from range. They are doing well at keeping these towers fairly healthy. Reverie is getting ran out by Riz, but they don't get on top of him. Buzzkin's coming around, though. They could go for something here. Does he have the Sonic Wave at the ready? Doesn't look like he does. Silly is on cooldown. They have the same as Eclipse on cooldown as well for Reverie. Musica picks up Shatan in the top side. TP in comes in from Buzzkin. Out comes the Troll Waller, but a beautiful Golem creating a lot of space here. Buzzkin makes the rotation in. He's the invis here as well. They want to try and get on top of Musica. I don't think they have the speed with the Light Strike Array on top, but he gets hit by the Axes and the Inkswell stun. So Baller, he's going to have the range. Actually, it is Buzzkin that picks up the kill, the last dot of the Shadow Dagger. Yeah. But, and he kept the invis room going as well, so he can look for another pick off here. You'll probably see he'll go for Tobbs if Tobbs shows his head. We'll be diving underneath the T1 tier. I think he's trying to make the go onto Bowser. He's trying to find him farming, trying to find him in a disadvantageous position. Right, Buzzkin, Invis, walking himself definitely towards don't see the him. tower. And he's given up. He's given up. He reveals himself towards that mid lane, wants to push it out. He got the kill he wanted, though. He got the kill on the off lane. And you can see, we were talking about Musica being top of the net worth for his team. He's been overtaken quickly with these fights happening. And the three cores of Zen 9, they're still showing their worth. Riz is absolutely huge right now. Zombie Knight is doing extremely well on the offlane. This is kind of what you see from these offlane Zombie Knight, especially when he has a good lane. Oh, the Purification comes out. He is hunting down Bowser. He has the TP away. Do they have the Sonic Wave? They do. They burst down the Spectre. Buzzkin picks himself up oh, another. And the high five too. They're like, I like, we don't see that enough. <laughs> Just, you know, like the little bro moment. You're like, yep, yeah, we did something well. Well, speaking of bro moment, the rest of Zen 9 connect with a kill here on Xavier. They're looking for Musica. They do get the Phantom's Embrace with the Soulbind slowed. It's only a little bit of a slow that Stroke of Fate comes out as well. And Bola can turn around. He has those uh, axes up. They don't need it. And they lose Tobbs as well on the back line. Shatan just cleans him up. Almost solo. Roger Dodger didn't have to help much there at all. And this is where they start combining as five men, right? You know, Riz has got his decent enough net worth. He has those drums up. Baller can go for maybe something along the lines of a mouse room if he wants to play a little bit quicker. Even a Diffusal Blade, I feel like. He's got be two and a half. Like, there's no reason. Diffusal Blade's fantastic to, to deal with this Musica hero. Because obviously you've got the back line. Riz is going to save you from a lot of the pickoffs. Xavier, though, he's looking for something. Yeah, he doesn't have the uh, the connection from the rest of his team to make that work. They he's under wards now. The they can see him. Yeah, they do know that he's there. I think if Roger Dodger sh wants to show, yeah, this will be it. Oh, they've caught him out. He does get the spike out for some, but he misses the impale. Out comes the haunt, but I don't think it's going to do all too much because it looks like Xavier's already dead. The dragon save comes forward. The Jair's doing quite a lot of work. They get the Fenders of Brace here out on the lane of Riz. Walking forward. The tank that he is doesn't care about anybody that's coming in, but with the Laguna Blade on top, they take him down. So they've made the response. Bowsu gets himself a Roger Dodger kill. Out comes the Sanity. So Ball is going to turn back around with that uh, Berserker's Rage. They do get him inside of the Ashel. Do they have enough damage to take him down? Yes, they do. Baus is the one that picks that up. So Zen 9, feeling a little bit invincible there, but Reverie making the rotation and getting himself a few extra kills. Yeah, it looked really good, but then they realized they didn't actually have the Buzzkin to back up. If they had Buzzkin with the Sonic Wave, I think that might be a four-man wipe the wrong way. Yeah. Dark Side of though, they're realizing their potential. They use all of their ultimates by the Golem, and they just clean house. He has two wands. Um, they're both his. Mm. Look, <laughs> people make mistakes. I mean, I, it looks like Tobbs' head is all over the place right now, and it's a little bit unfortunate because you know what to fix that? I dare fix will fix that. that. Looks like I we're mean, going to have a replay here of this fight. Dark Sided, they were coming in. Xavier had all the information from the Invis, but it doesn't look like it was enough. That sanity is Eclipse coming in the backside. Baller tried to do what he could with that battle trance, but... I mean, you just get caught around by the Arsenal and Prism, but they didn't get the, the matchups done, but it didn't matter because he was so low HP anyways. Yeah. 
And also, we're, we're stopping. Maybe Tobbs just is daring to dream. Like, we're, we're, we're shutting him down. Maybe he's got a plan. Maybe he realizes. Nope, he sold it. <laughs> We've talked it up. He's realized. <laughs> maybe it was It was like, you know that shot bug where you, like, you spam quick I do buy? it all the time. Like, I have the quick buy and I just double tap it or yeah. triple tap it to buy all, like, the little branch uh, yeah. parts and it just buys the whole thing twice. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate there for Tobbs. I like this from Buzzkin though. So he goes to Yules, and now he's going straight for the Zaganims. He wants to be able to fight a lot. He wants to set the pace, and he doesn't want to sit on that two and a bit minute cooldown ultimate. He wants that 40 seconds, and he wants to play around Bala as much as he can. And obviously Riz, he's still a chubby boy. He's dropped behind Reverie, but he's definitely still up there comparative to what Musica is. Yeah, I mean, Reverie does have that hand of Midas accelerating his farm a little bit more. He did only connect to that fight top, so that means he's just been sitting back in the jungle just farming up a storm. He's level 14 already on this OD. Hmm. When they start getting to the point where yeah, he gets a few more levels... 13 versus 14, they're a bit close. That's just the Midas, the power of that extra bit of XP every time he gets that off. On the other side, though, he's getting closer. I mean, Darkseid have done a great job at slowing this game down, right? You we were talking about that where they needed to start slowing the pace down, getting to a point where Bowser can start hitting some creeps, where River can start hitting these creeps. And Zen 9, they've only really taken out the outer tier once. So they haven't really done a massive dent in the structural uh, integrity of Darkseid. And so it, it just means now that you can see that they feel like they need to start pressuring these tier 2 towers. They need to start locking out the jungle. They need to make sure that Bowser and Reverie can't just have free reign of their own jungle. The problem is that they've left it too late. Horns back up. Reverie's just going straight in. He knows the horn can come up and I think I think that's just a dead hero. Well they're gonna throw out the Phantoms in Brace here. Out comes the horn on top the Soulbind comes in but it doesn't matter because Reverie drops the hammer. Two kills already for the outward devourer. He wants to walk forward but the golem is so gosh darn slow. They throw the dagger forward they want Shatan. The Frostbite comes out buying him a little bit of space and I think he's just gonna create enough space for Biasu. They do the Light Strike Array comes out and they're gonna give the kill here to Biasu. He's just going to keep following Chitan through the jungle, and he does get the kill there. So they're giving him a little bit more of an accelerant towards that uh, Sacred Relic. And once that does come out, that's when it's going to start getting scarier for Zen 9. We're talking about them having control of the early game, but these last couple of fights, the Reverie's made his rotations, Bowser's used the Haunt perfectly, and they're just getting the better of these fights, Dark Yeah, I mean, Reverie's showing his worth right now. Like we saw him, he's been skyrocketing up, he's now top of the net worth. Every single one of these fights, these hammers have been... Fantastic. He's just been absolutely cleaning up these supports. And they're both Intel supports. They just don't have the levels. They just don't have the items to live through it. And that's the thing with this uh, this core Omni Knight. Yeah, you might be tanky, but that means uh, another int stealing a uh, little uh, factory here for, for every. He's just able to, to come in with his Arcane Orb, steals quite a lot, got two or three hits off, got the Ashland Prison, got another couple of hits off, and then bam, he drops that hammer. And yeah, Rez, uh, Riz, you might be tanky, but you've got no int, my friend. Yeah, it is. It is a shame because Riz is gone. He's gone for the boys' items. Like that's going to be a solar crest on the. I think completed on the courier. No, he's gone the hood, the hood instead. He's going to commit complete the pipe. They realizing now that's a lot of magic damage that they actually can't live through. And Bala hasn't got his BKB. He is building straight towards it very early. He did pick up that pick up that early defusal bay, which I quite like for him, but. He's not fighting with it. You know, he's still sitting back and farming and just trying to get to the point where he's uh, a lot scarier. But, you know, Zen9, they're making these aggressive moves towards the T2 Towers, but they're just leaving ball to his own devices. Yeah, I mean, he's in a bit of a hard place here as well. I think he has to TP out. They don't really want to be fighting here if the rest of the team isn't going to commit. I mean, there's no does haunt. have the TP, though. There's no Haunt. There's no Sanities. Maybe this is a good time for uh, Zen9 to, to aggress back the other way, but I think they might be just waiting on a few key item timings. You know, Buzzkin is getting closer and closer to that Agony Scepter, about 700 gold away for him. Once that comes up, it's going to be a lot easier for them to fight, right? Yeah. And they did end up committing a lot of the TPs. It looks like Xavier, Xavier might be in trouble. Is that a Yule Scepter that's up? He, he doesn't look for it. Oh, that, that, that's, that's a Radiant Ward. Yeah. So Bala does get rid of the Ward instantly, but... Bit of a misplay from Buzzkin there, not being able to get that Yule Scepter off. It is a shame he doesn't get the kill, but he's getting closer. Once that Agonim does come up, that's when he, they, they, they can really just start running around the map, right? Like, they just run in. Riz should have that pipe completed as well. You know, Ball's going to get yeah, fairly Riz close very to close. his BKB. Once that BKB comes up from the troll ward, I think that's just going to be the go button here for Zen 9. But Baosu has picked up that Radiance. It's a little bit late, 20 minutes in, but he has been pressured quite heavily. He's sitting at fourth of the net worth right now. And Reverie, with that hand of Midas, he's moving... Closer and closer to, I believe it was a Hurricane Pike. Yeah, he's already got it completed. And uh, that's that's where he's going to start blowing people up. That Kaya and the Yasha adds that amp, special amp um, on the spell damage. He adds that extra int itself. And Zen 9 aren't going to be able to live through it. The only person that's probably going to be fine with it is obviously this Queen of Pain. He's quite high on the int. He's got 90 there. 
And Bala's, if he gets his BKB off first. Not defusal hit here out on Todd's, but they use the, uh, the, the Haunt on top and the Hammer gets dropped. They've taken out two very quickly. Riz, yeah, you might be tanky, but I don't think you're tanky enough, my friend. Bouncy is the one that picks it up. They get three. They want four. Do they have the Imprison? They do. Reverie catches ball underneath these tier one tower. They have the stuns and they have the damage. So they've gotten rid of the troll wall. A triple kill Q for the Outworld Devourer and Darksided. They had strangled back control of this game and they're looking hot. Yeah. I mean, Spectre's always going to struggle in the other game. Bowser's done a pretty good job of staying relevant. 7, 4, and 6. Now that he's got this Radiance, now they want to fight. Reverie is absolutely huge right now. He's just skyrocketing through it. 2,000 net worth above the Queen of Pain. About to be more. And Zen Nine can't fight them. And they're, they're trying to take these fights anyway. And they've used the GA now. So they, the, the window where these big cooldowns are down for Darksided, it's the same thing. It's... I think, they found cool I think they found Xavier. Looks like they do. They find him in the jungle there. They're looking for more. Do they weigh us up in his TP with the Sonic Wave on top? Tobzino gets himself into the base and away from the death. So he's okay for now. They did use the Sonic Wave, but as you said, the Agony Scepter is already up here for Buzzkin, so he's fine with that. Yeah, 35 second cooldown. Just uh, it's a bit quick. That is a bit quick. But either way, Dark Tide are really starting to utilize these big ultis. Every single time they have Horn, every single time they have Golem, every single time they have the Sanity's Eclipse, they're coming in, they're getting multiple kills. They're getting four, even three kills, and they're just being able to turn that into objectives as well. That's the biggest thing with these big teamfight ultis, right? You need to make sure you get some kills and you turn it into an objective. Yeah. I mean, they've already got... The tier two here is a huge one. Getting that on the top lane is massive because that's usually a very hard fight to take. And the fact that they've got it now... They're going to have to start getting tier 1s. The mid lane obviously is free, and obviously bot lane, you can see Reverie is starting to push out that lane. They don't seem to uh, want to fight anywhere near this. They don't seem to know either. This is a, a nice little play here from Zen9, realizing that the big team fight ultis are down from Dark Siders, so they don't really have a way of contesting this Roche pit. But, I mean, is Aegis going to be enough for them? Who are they going to give it to? It looks like they're going to give it to Buzzkit on the Queen of Pain, so we can play a little bit more aggressive on that Quap. It is an interesting choice because Buzzkid hasn't been in these last few fights, but I think now that he's got the Ags, his team's told him, we need you, we need to win these next two team fights because it's starting to spiral out of control. Well, see how much they can transition this Aegis into building damage. It's kind of the same deal as a team fight, right? You win a team fight, you want to get an objective. You get Aegis, you either want to turn it into quite a little net worth or you want to turn it into a, a few objectives. And can they put the pressure onto Darkseid when these ultis are down? They have the Haunt back up. How much longer do we have the Golem? I think it's pretty close, right? It's pretty... It's nine seconds. Yeah. So they've, they've waited a bit too long for these team fight ultimates to come back up. On the other side, though, the, the big thing with Aegis, when you get that and you think it's going to be a net worth lead, it's you, more often not it, because the other team has to play defensive. They don't want to fight. Darksider don't care. Look how aggressive they're standing up here. They're standing towards the tier two. They don't even have vision. Like they're completely blind of this situation. And Buzzkin's been found. He has found Reverie here. He's sitting in Viz as well. So he knows where this OD is walking. He wants to try and get himself a kill. So he's going to walk on top of a ward. But the rest of Zen 9, they're not combining with him just yet. And they saw Xavier just ulti there. I wouldn't be surprised if they start sitting on this high ground. Maybe up here with a ward. And they'll just sit here with Shatan. Well, Xavier is not walking there just yet. I think he was just on the edge oh, of the they saw Buzzkin. Rocket. They know that Buzzkin is around somewhere, but they have no other way of getting on top of him. They have no other way of revealing him just yet. So the bounty runes come up. Xavier snakes the one underneath the nose of Shatan. Baller gets the top one. So he's okay for now, but he has that freshly picked up BKB. So this is where Baller needs to start getting involved for Zen9. He needs to start being a part of these team fights because this is where he gets his, a little bit of a power spike, right? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be huge for them. If they can win the next team fight, they're back, back in the game. They're going to be start able anyway. to break out bottom. They do come in. The Soulbind comes out onto Xavier. The Haunt on top. How much damage can they do? Can they get rid of these heroes? But it looks like the Sanity's Eclipse gets dropped on the backside. They don't get rid of anybody. The Sonic Wave on top does a decent amount of damage. They've taken out two heroes already on the side of Darkseid. And Baller comes in with that BKB and the Battle Trance. And he burns down uh, Reverie. And the Yule Scepter up on the backside. They're going to be able to find out Tobbs here. Buzzkin gets himself a nice little Warlock kill. It's going to take a little while to get rid of him, but he will get rid of him nonetheless. Zen 9 lose nobody. Darksider lose four. Well, that's a heads-up play from Buzzkin. So he uses that Aegis to completely bait that enemy team on the Tier 1. Everyone's TPing. Everyone's massing up. Bala's coming in. And then all of a sudden, they have nothing left. They've got the Golem, and that's it. They used the Hammer already. They've used the Spectre ulti. Shatan gets a massive freezing field off that lasted for about half that fight. And they clean up. They just have too much damage in the mid game. And this is what we're talking about with the Aegis. You can turn it into a team fight win. You can turn it into a net worth lead. This is what Zed9 have done. 
They realize their power is black with the BKB on the troll warlord. Reverie has no way of getting away from it. Gets rooted, gets taken down in the battle trance. And then nine decided to come back. This is going to be a close on Woggy. It's it's going to be. It, we always thought it was going to be close. It started to look a bit tedious, a bit iffy when the Spectre was top net worth and OD was coming second, and they were winning every team fight. But Z9 have shown their prowess. They show they can win these team fights without the top net worth, and they're now sitting at such a stable four cores. You can see they're, they're pretty much catching up on the Grimstroke as is. It's just Shatan that's been sacked. I mean, this is kind of Shatan's playstyle, right? He plays those really heavy fires. He plays things like Shadow Shaman, plays the Crystal Maiden, and he plays them. You know, he just gets these couple of braces and tries to be tanky in these fights. Yeah. Um, I mean, the big as thing we said, Roger Dodger is very, very greedy on these. Yeah, you can forms. see. Look at his build. He's built <laughs> brown boots and straight into Lotus Orb. It's a greedy build, but it's it's really nice to be able to get that early Lotus Orb. And you can see he's even farming some of the free camps. And you don't often see a Pos Four being able to do this. He has left. Oh. Oh, he's not even going to see him. Oh, that's oh whoever, whoever shows up to that is going to be real annoyed seeing a 12 <laughs> health creep. Well, what is the next set of items they're trying to break open these team fights to Darksider? Do they just not be baited by the Aegis? Do you think they should be able to win a lot harder when there's no Aegis on Zen 9? I think the Mantis is pretty big. Um, the big one will be, I think BKB is needed on Reverie. You could see what happened there. He got kited a bit. He got stuck in that Astral by himself here. And he couldn't BKB blink out because they just started dropping AoE spells on top of it. Yeah, he does go the Sanity's Multiplier as well. So we saw how heavy that hammer gets dropped. And now it's going to drop even harder. Baller, he's looking for more. They get themselves a nice little D-Ward. And this is kind of what you can do with the Troll Warlord, right? He's got his BKB. He's going to go for a Scard. He's getting quite tanky. Just throw that heavy 2,500 health is quite a bit to chunk through, especially because he's got the ultimate. He's got that BKB. That's basically a reset of health. It's it's a cheap Satanic. It's a poor man's Satanic. <laughs> but when he, he does get that Satanic himself, that's when he starts getting scary. But as you said, the three cores on the side of Zen 9 are starting to get themselves closer and closer to the cores of Dark Side. And, and uh, Music is falling behind a little bit here. On the Lena. What's his next item? Yeah, I believe he just got travel. So. He's gone the Ag's next oh. item, which is it's smart. They found one here. It is Riz, but as you said, 2800 HP. So hard to get through. It'll be really hard for them to try and deal with this Omni Knight because he's just going to get tankier and tankier. He's going to head towards that uh, Halberd as well. And that's when he starts getting scary, right? He can just chuck it onto Reverie and, you know, pre BKB. That's pretty much the OT out of the fight. Yeah, that or Spectre as well. Spectre starts to hit very hard. Like, people forget that 200 damage is a lot, and then you add the whole Desolate doing another 50, doing a bit more pure damage. It all adds up, and it just makes him tankier. It gives him that status resist we talked about yesterday being a broken. slight bit too strong. I wouldn't say broken. Heavenly say Grace plus Assange will be a lot. How much does he get? He gets 50 from that, right? Yeah, status resist is 50, and then Assange is, I want to say... 30? No, I think 16. Is it 16? Yeah. I think not, it might be 16. Yeah. It's not much. Well, I mean, that's 66%. Oh, scaling. Scaling doesn't scale oh, okay. 100%. Um, so it's probably around the 60 mark. It's still quite a lot. That is that is quite a lot of stun that you're getting rid of. And that means that Riz can start running around these fights, start doing a Ooh, lot. Oh, Meme Hammer. Okay, the Minion Hammer is coming up here soon for Xavier. One of my most favorite items. I love that item too, but it, it, it feels... I mean, you have to be on the right hero to make it work, right? Well, the big thing, it's one of those, if your hero can't push, but your team needs push, that's what you buy. Yep. And Oops. we're starting to see the levels come up on Buzzkin. Everyone knows how annoying Klopp in the late levels. He gets that AoE Shadow Strike. He gets that Scream of Pain, Fear, and he starts to become very hard to manage. I think they're just going to start waiting for those levels to come up, wait for the next Roshan. You can see here, same as the Troll Warlord, like, that extra 25% evasion or the 40 damage if he chooses it. They're both very strong. Even with the Scardi, they're still not in, wanting to fight. Yeah, Baller has got himself closer and closer to Reverie on that OD. About a thousand behind him. Has picked up that Scardi as well. The Hex is on the way here for Roger Dodger. Talking about how greedy he is on these heroes. And he does seem to be able I to... I like this though, because he's pushing out a lane that's quite safe. He's making the rest of the enemy team think about that lane. And oh, Xavier's found Buskins. one. He gets blown up by himself here. He has that BKB, but I think the chain stun coming out from Yuzuka as well as Xavier was far too much for him. Has that buyback, but you're not going to want to use it. That was before the Axe as well. It's only going to get harder for Buzzkin if he doesn't get something. He's going for the Hex. I think he might switch that out for something like a Lincoln's instead, so he doesn't get blown up completely. It's just a rough game for him. Oh, 
They're going to be able to charge into this tier 1 tower. They have all the ultimates available to Dark Side. I don't accept a little bit of blow, but that is a fairly short cooldown. So they get themselves a little bit of an objective. Does this game continue to slow down a little bit more until, you know, uh, Biasu gets completely scary on Dark Side? Because you saw that we were, they were winning those fights, but as soon as the BKB comes out on both those calls, it's really hard for them to win those team fights, right? Yeah, it is a nice little play from Dark Side. Obviously, they've realized that BKB really hurts. And on the other side, they're getting delayed because they really want ages. And, but they've smoked in, they're looking for Biasu, and I think they're going to find him. Yeah, it looks like they're going to look for the Spectre. They have found him. The Fence of Brace comes forward, but he already got the dagger off, and the Mantisar gets himself far enough away, so he's getting himself into the trees and TP himself away. So Zen 9 committed quite a lot. Actually, no, Biasu has come back in. You get rooted up. You're going to get gone on by the Troll Wallet as well. He's just going to use that freezing field. They're going to take out Baosu. An and interesting the play the coming from going? him. But Xavier's in the backside here. He has a vendetta. He goes out on a Roger Dodd. He gets the Impal on top. But the Heavenly Grace does burst that away. Bowler using that BKB. Wants to take down another. He gets two. The Golem comes out. But I think this is a little bit of a disjointed fight from Darkseider. They can't even get Shatan. Music is going to pay the price. The buyback comes out from the Nyx Assassin. But it's not enough. And Buzzkin wasn't in that fight at all. He's now looking for more. They might find Reverie here. Forces away. They don't have a T2 to tower. See another blink. He's pretty aggressive. He's there we go. He's forward. It has found him, but the Ashland Prison comes forward. He doesn't use that BKB too early, but with the status of the instant, he gets out of that fairly Save quickly. you got to be careful Further here. forward. The Buskin has gone inside of the base. The Yule Scepter comes out. The BKB has been used by the Queen of Pain. They want to get this Reverie kill. They need to take out this OD. With the Heavenly Grace coming out, that's not enough damage from the Sonic Wave, and I think he's just used his 10 second BKB all for naught. Xavier comes in. They're inside the base. Set nine. You need to make sure you start getting these towers because you can't just dive against heroes like the Spectre and the OD. Yeah, they, the big thing is they've used Golem. There's no Spectre. There's no music. They're not going to buy back on him. Oh, they found Buzzkin. They do get the Meteor Hammer. Actually, no. He blinks away because of that Heavenly Grace. Reverie's going to come forward. He doesn't have that BKB. He has to get rid of this Phantom first. That 10 second BKB on Reverie, though, that's going to be huge. They've realized that he just bought that and they've backed out accordingly. Still, it's a win. It's definitely a win for Zen 9. You can see the net worth starting to show it. Like, it's a bit of a drop down. XP is huge though. You never really talk about the net worth, you talk about the XP on these high value level 20 and 25 talents. Yeah, it was all kind of came from Baosu just being a little bit greedy with that dagger, right? He got away and then he came back out to throw a, I, I don't know, maybe throw a dagger at Shatan, but I'm not sure. He paid what for he, what it he was really thinking. heavily. It was, a, it was a very high risk play. At the same time, I think Shatan just drops the Crystal Nova anyway and finds him so he can't really TP out. It's just a shame. There was a few things Zen 9 could have done better as well. Like, if they get that bind off, Bowser doesn't even make it to the bottom trees, but lucky they kept it. They kept it for the next fight, and they absolutely destroy Musica and Xavier because of it. Uh, another smoke up here from Zen 9. And look who no is by himself, bot lane. And he's used the Manta this time as well. If he gets caught out here, this could be a real, real problem for Darksiders. Yeah, Biasu throws another dagger, gets himself into the trees. I believe he will TP away this time. Yep, no more greedy daggers. And Zen 9... They do collapse onto the Spectre, but they don't get her. They're just going to get rid of this Creek Wave yeah. and try and pressure this Tier 3 tower, I'd imagine. Yeah, and on the other side, you can see Xavier's doing the same thing. He's looking for more. Um, I believe he's building an E-Blade. That, that could be a very early E-Blade coming out of the Nyx Assassin. <sighs> E-Blade for what, though? Because um, Musica's Laguna Blade is now pure damage. I guess Sanity's is pretty Sanity's good. Sanity's is going to be a lot of damage. You can also E-Blade somebody who uh, Ball is going on. Yeah, and you can E-Blade Baller himself as well. So it's yep. it's not a bad pickup. He seems to be very far away from it. Although, I don't see the Ghost Scepter being bought. So he's just got a casual Eagle Song sitting there. I think it might be a bait and he might decide otherwise. At least, I kind of hope so. Oh! Oh, they do hit the LSA, but he is invis because of that Glimmer Cave. So Dark Sider can't find him just yet. They walk inside of the pit. Baller wants to see if he can get a little bit of that Roshan. Can't find it. Yeah. I mean, if you're Dark Sider, though, you really can't Roshan. It's going to be a very, very slow affair. We're on the other side. Baller can pretty much solo it in probably 15 seconds. I'd oh, say. Yasu, he's getting going on here. They do throw out Buzzkin. He comes forward. He does get the start with the Spy Carapace. They do use the Golem. Hits on a three of these heroes, but where is the follow-up? Darksided. You use the Golem, but it doesn't look like it's for much. The BKB has been used by Buzzkin as well on the front side. They found out one of these heroes. They're trying to get rid of Riz, but with the Horn on top, they can't get on top of him because they don't have any reveal. The Sandy's Eclipse on the backside gets rid of Roger. Sends Satan to very low health. The Baller, he's used that Battle Trance, so he's going to have to try and survive here. He has no BKB either, and the Battle Trance will be pretty much done by the time he gets back out. 
So I thought Dark Sider were a little bit disconnected, but it looked like Zen 9 were not ready for that fight. And Bowser is walking into the pit. He's got the DD. Music is going to respond as well. And you said they can't really do it, but I think they can now. With no heroes, it's slow, but if you can't get killed, it doesn't matter how slow it is, you're going to eventually get it. So this looks like a free Aegis in the pocket of Dark Sided. Man, I thought after that golem being used so early there from Tobbs, it was not going to be a good fight for Bark Dark Sided. But they get the Aegis, they get the cheese. OD's going to be picking that one up. And man, these next couple of fights are going to be hard for Zen 9 because you just see there, Baller just gets kited through that BKB. And once that's down, he can't really do anything, even if he has the Battle Trance. Yeah, I, I think the window where Zen 9 are the stronger team is kind of over here. Like, you're looking at Baosu, you're looking at how strong he is. Reverie as well, he didn't even use his BKB yet. He's still on a 10 second BKB. Baosu's now got the Aegis, he's about to have the Abyssal. Everything's coming up well for them, and they're going to get their talents as well. That extra dispersion is a lot. Obviously, neither of those are fantastic, but the extra arcane orbs in steel means two fights in a row guarantees you the second fight won. This is where it starts getting harder and harder for Zen9. They've taken out almost all the outer towers Darkseid would have. They still have two standing of their own. Ball is going to get that basher up. Music is going to try and push out bottom as much as he possibly can. And we're going to get to a point now where it's going to be harder and harder for them to get rid of this Spectre. She's going to haunt. She's going to get on top. They're going to start carrying detection. These Glimmer Capes aren't going to be the end all and be all. I mean, Roger's getting closer and closer to that Hex, so that might be nice for them to try and lock down the OD, but... Well, that's the thing. He's got that BKB that he hasn't used yet. So as long as he gets that off, a 10-second BKB in a team fight is pretty much the fight one if you're committing that much to it. Bala obviously can't fight him anymore because that BKB is getting low. It's down to seven seconds, and it's only going to get harder for him. You can see what happens. He gets kited. He just gets put in the Astral as soon as he tries to ultimate. Yeah, Buzzkin. What's his item progression looking like? He was going towards a Hex, right? I think he's still committed for the Hex. and oh, He almost has it. Bit of a bit of an Oz Dota pause. This is the first one of the game, so can't complain too much. First one of the game, third of the day? Second of the day. Yeah, second. Well, that's pretty good. I'll give that a one. No, no, no. This is the third. Yeah, I believe this is the third because we had Tekor and someone with AU internet in the first game. I, I want to say Hype Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so Zen 9 they're behind by 4,000. There's an Aegis here on the Spectre. There's Cheese on the OD as well. Are, are they trying to smoke and try and get another kill? Or do you think like these team fight ulties are just too hard they're, to fight They're not into? in a massive rush if you're Darksider. But on the other side, you really need to get a pick off if you're sitting on Zen 9. That's yeah. why they've got this smoke. I think they're trying to clear out. Like You can see this sentry here that they've put down. Brand new. They're trying to clear out any wards so they can try and smoke up with the three of them. Maybe sit behind Buzzkin who is going to push the lane as heavily as he can and see if they can fight in this area here, just in this bot lane. This just chunk here. Because if they can get a fight here, then they're not prepped. That's how they can win the team fight. Well, they have the uh, the Hex on Buzz getting if he wants to buy it out. Obviously, he doesn't have buyback after that. I believe Roger Dodger has enough gold as well on the Grim Stroke. Yeah, Roger's sitting here posturing. I believe he is going to purchase it. He's also got that level 20 coming up in a sec as well. So he'll have that. I'm going to assume he's going to go the Kill Phantom. Yeah, it's really big on the OD. I mean, he has BKB to get rid of it. There is a few heroes if you do get the Phantoms and Brace out onto, it can be quite hard for them to try and deal with. Yeah. Um, but I mean, none way. of them attack very fast except for the Lena. So, as long as you can get it on two of the supports, it's fantastic to get on Warlock, obviously. All these spells are so crucial. And he is pretty slow. So, if he gets stuck on the side trying to get his Golem off, just hitting this Phantasm real slowly, it's going to start to feel like an eternity for him. Well, 20 seconds or 22 seconds until Tobbs has that Warlock back up. Uh, Wallet Golem get back up, and then that's when it starts getting scary. How much longer do we have on the Sanities for Reverie? 20 25. seconds. So in the next 25 second window, Zen 9, it's going to be hard for them to, to take a fight, right? They need to make sure, because if they commit you know, in 30 seconds, then they're going to have all the team fight ulties back up here for Dark Side, and that's when it's going to be hard for them to yeah. win a fight. Yeah, they I had the BKBs, but it doesn't really matter. I think they could win without Sanities, to be honest. Like, the hammers are being huge, but right now... How do you kill Baosu twice? He's got 2,500 health, a bit more, 2.8. He's going to come up, and you're going to have nothing to burst him down. You're probably going to have to commit the Aghanim's Sonic Wave. You're going to have to commit the Freezing Field to kill him once. Where does the second lot of 3,000 damage come from? And I'm barely sure that's an Abyssal Blade coming on the Courier for him. Because he's got that 1,300 gold. He's only got the one item prepped. Yeah, he's going to have the Abyssal Wave for the next fight. So he could probably just solo pick anyone he wants when he comes in with that Haunt. 
I think you just fight. If you're if you're Dark Sider right now, you get that abyssal and you just start to rotate towards bot. There's only one tier two left, and you know they're going to be hiding around this this little triangle here. Like these three jungle camps, Barla has been farming them the whole time. He needs to be farming them. He's come down here to farm these two that are quote unquote the safest he can. So you might as well just commit to a fight. You've got everything up except for the sanities, and obviously Nyx is just ulti, so he'll be there quickly. Yep. And he has swapped out. He didn't go the E blade. Well, hopefully Roger Dodger can reconnect back into this game because I'm interested to see how this is going to go. Um, if Dark Sided are the victors in this game, is there anything... Should Zen 9 go back to the drawing board? Or, or do they just go, okay, they got Spectre Warlock, it went late, Revely yeah, had a really good Yeah, I think you just got to get rid of Spectre Warlock. Like, actually, f to be honest, you should have seen this exact lineup coming. Yep. As soon as you saw the Spectre Warlock and then they third picked the Knicks, you're like, oh, wait a minute, we've seen this before. We should be studying our team. I think that's what's come down to it. Zen 9 haven't studied the games yesterday exclusively to realize that was the draft they wanted to run. They have run it the same way. They've done the same rotations at the same timings. They've got the same items as well. They haven't even switched anything up. They've just done the exact same gameplay. And if you're Zen 9, you could be like, oh, this is the window they want to fight. This is the window they want to go for Roche. They won't defend these towers before these items. And they haven't really respected Darkseid the same way that Darkseid have clearly respected Zen9. Hmm. Have, have a guess, CNC. If we're, if we're looking at win rate, we're talking about the ages, we're talking about the cheese. There, there's a spectre on, on, on Radiant, so it's going to be like 80% to Darkseid. Oh, come on. Come on. I was so close. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It's it's close. Close, it, it, but no it's cigar. pretty close. Um, yeah, it's just... I've seen Spectre games. Everybody's seen Spectre games. She gets 25, and it gets to that point where it's just so hard to kill her. Yeah, you can try and deal with the rest of her team, but Reverie's big as well. You know, Music is doing his bit in these team fights. As long as he gets that Ag's Laguna Blade off, they can get in and, you know, do a lot of damage on top of that. And, you know, the Shiva's guard. He could buy that out right, right now. He could. Like, um, he's got an extra 1,000 gold on top of that. He obviously wants to save for buyback. 3.3k. He's getting close. Another 1,400 gold, and he can buy both. Have the buyback, have that Shiva's Guard. Obviously, he'll want to be using the cheese by then or pass it off to someone. Maybe maybe Baosu after that H just goes down, just how we have three health pulls. So it looks like we are going to be back into this game here. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of a disconnect from Roger, but it looks like he has sorted out all these issues. And before the pause happened, we're talking about Zen 9 pushing towards this bottom side. They dewatered their triangle, so it looks like they're going to try and go for a little bit of a smoke play, but... I don't think uh, they know that these ultimates from Dark Side are coming yeah, back off. It is down. quite hard though, because you can see these lanes have been pushed in, like they're all the way up here, and obviously in the mid lane, we can see how close they are. You can't really do much if you're Zen 9, and you're basically just waiting to see where Dark Side show up to fight you. And you can see they're prepped and ready. They're wanting to smoke. They don't Oh, do they have a smoke? It's surely on the courier now. Oh. Yep, there, there we go. go. Okay. So they're going to use the smoke now. They have all their ultimates at the ready. Xavier's walking forward with that vendetta. He's going to have to wait for it to come back off cooldown if he wants to yeah, be that I invis threat. I think they're going to find but only one here. the one that gets found. He is underneath the ward here. They do use the Glimmer Cape on top. So Buzzkin is making the TP in towards the shrine here, but this is the entirety of, of Darkseid. And they're coming in. It's a huge wall at Golem hitting onto all of Zen9. They have to run forward. The GA is doing a little bit of work here. The Soulbind's keeping these heroes stuck together. The Sonic Wave does a little bit more work. The big EV comes in, but the hammer gets dropped. Baller has to use that battle trance to keep himself alive a little bit longer. There's no more mana left here on Riz and Bala with that battle trance. He tries to do what he can, but he goes down instead. Zen 9, they are starting to fall to pieces here on their shrine and Reverie again with those big arcane orbs. He gets rid of the Omni Knight and that's three dead, two of them being caused on Zen 9. And this is not looking good if you're a Zen 9 fan. Yeah, and you lost Xavier and that's it. And the big thing, you, losing Xavier there, it's, it's bad, but You've done so much. All of your team is on such a high health pool. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go for that T3. It was just absolute fantastic fight. And you can see the replay here. Look how much Xavier tanks here. He just cops the front line of Riz, cops Bala. They can't run past him either. They just can't stop. They have to kill him. And that's the thing, this Soulbind comes out, but it is only onto the Golem. The Hammer gets dropped. They didn't have enough damage to kill Baller in that Hammer drop, so he gets the Battle Trance off, but, I mean, it's just a little bit of time wasted. And as you said, they only lose Xavier. Reverie still so much in in this fight. Biasu didn't even lose the Aegis. They didn't even have to use the Cheese. And, man, Darkseid are looking so good in these team fights, and it feels like it's so hard for Zen9 to win these team fights because of the big ultis that they've got. 
Yeah, these these ultimates late game just get so insane, and they only get stronger is the big thing. Like we just see Rev hit. Rev finally hits 25. He gets that arcane steel, so that's going to be there for a while. Now they take a free tier three, and they just back off. They reset. They don't need to worry. They're not in a rush. They have the late game, and they got two D wards there. Yeah, that is big for them. They're going to take out this shrine as well. There's a T2 tower left standing in the bottom side of the map, so if they want to try and transition into those uh, Mega Creeps later on, they have to get rid of that. But as you said, they're more than happy with how this game is going. They can play it at their own pace. They yeah. can do whatever they want now. It, Roche is about to pop for them, so they're about to lose this age in about 30 seconds. But that's a victory. You got the you got the team fight you wanted. You got the tier 3 you wanted. You used everything. You lost to just Xavier, who honestly, not much of a loss. So you'll live with that. Yep. You're more than happy to trade a position for, for the carry of Zen 9. They even lost the offlaner as well on top of that. So Riz, even though he was having such a good game in that early game, he just hasn't really, really been able to transition. I think this all comes down to the OD pick. He just seems to do pretty much whatever he wants in these team fights with his BKB. Uh, Buzzkin has been trying to utilize that BKB, but he's just not really been able to stick in these team fights. He gets a nice little sonic wave off, but... I mean, it's not enough. It just feels like there's too much HP. They found Bouncy with the mid lane, though, and as you said, this Aegis is going to wear out fairly just soon. Ran out, just he ran actually out. did just run out, so he's quite tanky, though, so they have to be careful. The Abyssal Blade comes forward here, and the Laguna Blade on top. Riz, he has to use that GA to keep himself alive. The Heaven Talbot stopping Bouncy from doing what he wants. The BKB comes forward, and the double Golem gets hit on top, so they get rid of that Freezing Field straight away. Baller has to use that Battle Trance on the backside, see if he can kill any of these heroes from Darkseid, but I don't think he can. And Bouncy, he sticks on a Shatan, he sends him back to the grave, and Baller, he's stuck between the rest of Darkseid and he's gone, he has no BKB, he has no Battle Trance, and he has no life. He's dead for 90 seconds, they lose Riz as well, they're going to lose Roger Dodger on the backside. The Hex comes out, but I think it's only buying time. Roger's walking away, Bowser has yet another Shadow Dagger, but he Doesn't kills him with a Radiance it. Burn anyways. Buzzkin gets out on full HP and full mana, and unfortunately he wasn't able to do anything in that team fight. And again, all they lose is Xavier, Dark Sided, they're charging down mid. Yeah. Honestly, you could just take my voice on repeat. <laughs> they won the fight, but they lost Xavier. That's a win for them. Like, honestly... <laughs> It, Xavier's just playing so well, playing this frontline role, because he knows as long as Barlet has to use his ultimate on him, that's a win. Like, they've used their committed everything. The BKB's down to five seconds. Oh, they, they found out Buzzkin. They do get the bash out as well. Do they have enough damage to lock him down inside the of that BKB? He gets oh, another bash. bash. Can they get oh. rid of Buzzkin? Looks like with the Glimmer Cape, they keep him alive for a little bit longer. So Shatan keeping his mid laner here for a little bit longer in. Out comes the Disarm as well. The Sonic Wave does a decent amount of damage, but not all too much. They're going to be able to take out this mid laner Rax here as well. So the melee racks goes the way of Darkseid. They want the range racks as well. There's another 25 seconds till Ball is up. Same with Roger Dodger. Yeah, they play safe, controlled Dota. They're realizing every single team fight they've won has been because of their ultimates. And they're just going to back off, wait for it. He's got the Ags now, so he might not die in these next team fights. They and found out Buzzkin. He doesn't have the BKB either. He comes forward with the Heavenly Grace, but Laguna oh Blade God. on top, and they get rid of Buzzkin. He's gone back to the grave. He has buyback, though, if he wants to try and fight here. But as you said, Darkseid, they're playing controlled Dota. They realize where they're strong and where they're not. They're trying to take out this Range Rex, and they certainly will get it. They're going to go for two lanes. See, this is the mistake, I think. They're going to buy back on Buzzkin. When do you fight? Do you fight because the ultimate oh, the soul in seconds? Comes forward, but that's a huge impel. Hits on a three of these heroes. Light Strike Array on top as well. Dark side, they're looking to try and get out. He do get the uh, Hex out on the two of these heroes. The ball is coming forward. The BKB coming out. He wants to try and get rid of Revery. The OD is getting forced off away. The Sonic Wave doesn't hit either. The Aston Imprisonment is buying him a little bit more time. And Xavier yet again dies here for the side of Dark side. The BKB comes forward. Revery is hitting away. He's going to get rid of Baller and he has no battle trance. He's dead. 90 seconds on the sideline. The Freezing Field's doing a lot of work, but Revery's doing more. They're getting rid of every Everybody here oh, on the side game. of Zed9, and lost. I think that is it. Baller tries to do what he can on his troll warlord, but Baosu is too big. Revry is too big. Dark sided. Looks like they've got the first game here against Zen9. And oh boy, this looks like it could be the upset of the day, Woglet. I mean, we talked about the last time they fared against each other in a different tournament. That was the semi finals, and Dark sided beat them last time as well. We were talking about the exact same things. They got a comfortable draft, they got a nice team fight oriented draft. That's what they want to do. And Zen 9 didn't respect them at all. They just let them have the exact same five heroes we've seen before. And not even a week ago. We're talking about yesterday they had the same five heroes. Yeah, it wasn't even 24 hours ago. It was yeah. it was pretty much the exact same time that they needed this. And, man, I, I, I don't think you can go past this Reverie OD. Every single game that he's played, he's looked amazing. He's done really well on that mid lane, really putting people, putting this team on his back. And then Bowser Spectre, they give him enough space and he just yeah. carries for them. Man, you're coming into this second game here of his N9. You've got to have those heroes floating around in your brain, respect right? Respect Ban. Just respect Ban OD. Respect Ban 
Spectre, respect Ben Warlock. You can get rid of two of them in the first phase. That's fine. You can get rid of one of them in the late game. That's fine. Because he, he's not picking the OD until the fourth pick for their team. So there's a, there's a decent chunk where you can actually get away with picking some counters to him. Picking up the Nyx Assassin is a major counter yep. to him because that burn, the mana burn does so much. There's just too many things that they let through. Yeah, it looks like too many things on the mind of Zen 9. Can they come back and even up the series here against Darkseid? Or will Darkseid take a very big upset with the 2-0 against Zen 9? Find out here after that very short break. Remember where it started. Your first experiences. Remember where you came from. The journey you traveled. The journey you love. Remember where it started. And imagine where it will go. Rise on. G'day, mate. Mr. Murray, have you decided on a name? We're thinking Callum. <laughs> this is Callum Murray. <laughs> to the seafood aisle. Calamari. Why'd they name you that? <laughs> I take you. Calamari. <laughs> Let's make a jack. Drink it through with Dare Ice Coffee.
What an upset we had here in our second series of the day. Darksider taking the first game up against Z9. But boy howdy, can Z9 come back and make it a 1-1 here or will we be having a 2-0 upset? Woggy, we're back again, mate. How do you feel after that one? Honestly, that was a good game. They, they Both teams showed what they, they're capable of. Darksider, I'm hoping for a different draft. I'm hoping for something new. But... They played those five heroes near perfectly, and I can't blame them for going back to them because we saw what happened when they picked them. They work really well together. They know their timings. They know how to play with Music of Xavier Lane. They know when Rev's huge, and it shows. When Rev's big, when Rev's having a good game, this team looks so strong. Yeah, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And we saw yesterday they won with it. Today they won with it well as well. So if you're a lot of these teams that show you, like, okay, maybe they're going to run this five-man stock standard kind of draft again. But it's still kind of the same idea, right? They're really relying on these team fight ultis. They're making sure that they work well with their timings. And they're not getting picked off when they don't have these ultis, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the big thing. Zen 9 didn't often fight when the ultimates were down because they were relying on Guardian Angels so much. Because they were relying on Bala's BKB timings. They never actually abused the fact that Warlock and Spectre had huge cooldowns so often. And the few fights they did actually abuse, they won so handedly. We saw in the bot lane when they went 4-0 and or 5-0, and and they all they lost was the Aegis. That's a huge win. And then they did another one in the mid lane where they fought. The Warlock Golem came on a bit too late, and it was just, it was just a bit too much, and Zen 9 overpowered them. But outside of that... It was pretty much exclusively with Warlock Alts. Yeah, well, Zen 9 now, they do get the bolster their roster with EJ coming back into it. So Buskin's going to step out. EJ comes back in. I feel like that's going to make a little bit more of a difference. Obviously, Buskin still did really well in the yeah. mid lane, but it's more about comfort, right? It's more about making sure that you guys understand how to gel together, how to use your spells together, who to go in, when to go in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Buskin looked not out of place, but he didn't feel comfortable that entire game. And you could, you could tell there were a few fights where there was 4v5, and Buzzkin had no TP. Or yeah. Buzzkin had just jumped to a different lane and couldn't come in. He had no mana. That kind of thing was happening. Where with EJ, I think that'll be a lot easier to play around. Yeah. And their hero pools are quite similar, so I don't expect any different picks. I might honestly see a quap two games in a row. Yeah. It was a pretty good pick. They did leave OD maybe too much farm. Yeah. Reverie obviously skyrocketing as soon as he got that Midas and that extra item, as soon as he got that blink, he was good to go. Yeah, I do feel like EJ does have kind of the same hero pool, but there's also heroes like the Death Prophet that I, that I come to, and in yeah. the Lena as well, which are two EJ classic heroes that does Definitely, play quite yeah. a lot. And I feel like that'll kind of allow Zen 9 to play around more of these kind of team fighty kind of deals where Quop, you know, felt like he was kind of on his own own for quite a lot. And as you said, he didn't really come to some of those fights when he maybe needed to. There was a little bit of a disconnect, but, you know, if EJ is playing something like the Death Prophet where Baller can yeah, really definitely. just play behind him and really get into these fights, it makes it a lot easier for Zen 9. But if you're dark side, you're feeling quite good about that draft. And now, I mean, Zen 9, they have to respect being one of these three heroes, right? Oh, I think it's got to be Warlock. Spectre can be countered. Warlock makes the lane too easy for him. He makes the Agonizing Bond combo with the, the Haunt so strong. Like, Radiance is burning... Like on everyone times by four because it's it's spread damage. Yeah. So you're taking about 120 damage per second just from radiance alone. We're not talking about the auto attacks. We're not talking about the spell damage. We're just talking about one item doing that much damage, and causing that much havoc too is the big issue. So if you're going to ban something, it's got to be the warlock because that's the first pick that they always go with. Spectre might be a nice ban as well. I see no reason why not because. Bowser hasn't really had to play much else. That is true. Bowser really has pretty much just been playing the Spectre this whole tournament, but it means that now Zen 9, they have these heroes in the backside of their brain. They have the OD when it comes out. They have heroes like the uh, the, the Warlock and the Spectre. If you're Zen 9, obviously you're not going to first ban an OD, but does Darkseid at first phase the OD, expecting um, it not to be banned, right? You definitely could first phase it if you have the final pick. Um, that's the big thing. But... There are other heroes. It's not like he's a one-trick pony. He has played other things pretty well. We talked about his Storm Spirit. We've talked about his Invoker both being really solid. He can play that Death Prophet and that Lena as well. So I don't think you need to first phase it unless you want to build your entire draft around Reverie. 
Yeah, and I feel like he is one of those players that you can certainly do that too, right? We saw in that last game, they gave him enough space, and he just worked his magic. He went in, got so many big hammer drops, so many good uses of the ulti, and they were just playing perfectly around these team fight ulties. But after seeing how well Dark Tide play around these team fights, do you think that they're going to go for a... Uh, the same style of draft, but just different heroes. You know, going things like the Enigma and these other heroes that have big team fight losses. Because Musica is a tight hunter spam. Yeah, why not? Because their team is so well rounded. They place like it's clear now that Dark Side are the, are the better team coordination. Yep, they're not better players by any means. They're probably quite even. But they just play as a team. They trust each other so much. They know their own timings. They know each other when they want to fight. They understand when someone says, no, I'm not coming. They're like, yep, okay, that's fair enough. You're 200 gold away from an item. Yep. Where some other teams are like, no, 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 you have to fight. We need this fight. I'm rich. I'm fat, etc. Yep. Dark side have just figured it out. They've put a lot of trust in each other to get that point. Yeah, well, we do get rid of the Warlock themselves, Darksiders, so that relieves Zen 9 from one ban. But they do ban out the Arc Warden, so it looks like Zen 9 uh, are a lot more It is more a running scared. gag. It's a running gag. Ban out Reverie's Arc Warden. <laughs> I still don't think it's a very good... Like, it's a good hero, but I don't think his Arc Warden is anything exceptional. Uh, compared to his other heroes, Like yeah. his OD is clearly a lot better. Yeah, 100%. So we'll see how Zen 9 go with their next ban. Got rid of the last track, got rid of the Arc Warden. There is still a few good POS 5s that are kicking around, right? You know, you've still got the Oracle, which wasn't touched in that last game, I believe. It was not. They left it through, which is honestly a pretty solid counter to the Spectre Warlock combo. You can get rid of a few things. Um, it might have been second phase ban. Um, Maybe. I'm not 100% sure with how the PNs went, but I, I feel like he was kind of untouched to a certain degree. Yeah, it's one of those heroes that if you can play it well as a team, it's OP. If you can't play it, it's really bad to pick because you build your entire draft around those saved and if you don't get them off, it's an actual disaster that your your carry just dies and then snaps at your support. Your support's sitting there uselessly having ulted himself, wondering where he went wrong. Well, they get rid of the Nyx Assassin instead, so Xavier doesn't have to play that anymore, can play something oh, different. Oh, Barra. Oh, the Barra gets bit. It's I gone. Mean, I don't think you're ever going to be able to see it. So the Sand King is the pick up here from Zen 9. Riz does play that extremely well and also, like... It's one of these heroes that constantly is able to fight. That Butter Strike is amazing. The Sandstorm's great as well. And yeah, Epicenter does have a long cooldown, but I mean, most of the time you can fight without it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the best part about him, I think, is still the early game progression. Like, we talk about the Crown, the Helm of the Iron Will for the Veil pickup. We talk about the, the Boots of Travel, surprisingly, with um, Tekor. And it's just shown how much damage you can do, how much absolute nuisance it can cause in the lanes. That's the big thing. It's Oh, and they've left the Ember through? That's another hero. That's a hero that nobody thought about was the Ember Spirit. It is a Baosu classic. A Reverie can play it as well. Jakiro? And the Jakiro, that's a Tob's hero. Yeah. They've left They've left the Oracle through, which is a huge counter to Ember Spirit, though. Um, but that's the thing. Zen 9 on a team that play it. Yeah, Shatan, doesn't Shatan play for it. All, these, all these buffs, all these, all these positives... He's never really got into Oracle. I think he's a bit too old school to pick up a new hero. Yeah, it feels like this could be a little bit of a chink in the armor here for, for Zen 9 is they don't use the Oracle. They don't use it like these other teams. So, you know, Atletico Fury is great on that Oracle. I feel these other teams really rely on this Oracle being a good hero, but Zen 9 is just not really their play style. Shatan plays... Great, pick it anyway. Pardon me. Do pick it anyways. You know, but Shatan usually goes for things like the Shadow Shaman, like the Crystal Maiden. Roger can play it as a pulse 4, though. That is true, but... Is it really a hero you want to be Honestly, putting farm priority on? It's pretty solid, especially in a lane with Sand King. It's a high damage hero. And if you can get items, you can get that early Aether Lens. You can get that early Spirit Vessel. Maybe a Lotus Sword by the 35 minute mark. Yeah, like those three cool. items are core. And if you can get all three of them by 35, 40 minutes, your hero is insanely strong. Not to mention the Ags meme. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's where it's at. The low cooldown purifying flames. All of a sudden, you're doing 700 damage in two seconds. Yeah, it feels like... It can be quite strong, but then you need the mana to sustain it, right? I mean, if you're building Ags, the least of your worries is mana. It's probably like, what have I done with four and a half thousand gold? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's wrong with me? But it's fun. It's just like a nice bit of fun. And it enables your draft so much. That's why the pick is so strong. Yep. Like, you can look here, like, they have to ban out Death Prophet now because we, we were talking about it. EJ Death Prophet, quite strong. Spirit Siphon gives health. That Aghanims gives a lot of health. You combo that with the Oracle ulti, you times the healing by two, and yeah. that hero is unkillable on the high ground. Yeah, it feels like it would be a very strong combo for Zen 9 to try and even up this series, but they get rid of the Morphling here as well, not allowing the Baosu to play that. And that's the thing with this Ember Spirit. Reverie as well as Baosu both can play it. So it means that they aren't locked into it being a pause 1, it being a pause 2. 
It really just allows Darkseid to kind of have a little bit more leeway in this uh this mid game uh, this mid phase of picking because the OD is still open. And I feel like that's pretty good against Oracle, right? Uh, it is alright, because you can Astral most of it. But the thing is, they still heal in the Astral Imprisonment. So yep. you're kind of committed, if they've got heals on them, you're like, okay, I know exactly how much health they're going to come back yep. with. On the other side, you can Astral the Oracle if you find him, Radiant and then just leave him. Kill everyone else and just leave him there for four and a half seconds, because most of the time when you pick an Oracle, your core is going to be either squishy, or will need backup at one point. Like a Troll Warlord is a good example. He can reset himself, but he needs that reset to start his ultimate. Yeah. And Oracle's perfect for that. Yeah. If you don't get that off, you can just get stun locked 100 to 0, and there's nothing you can do. Well, we'll have to see what Darksider do do. They still have their pods 4 to, to pick here for Xavier. I, I would like to see something like a Tiny, which is quite good at killing the Oracle early on. You know, you get that Blink Dagger up and you can... You can just go double zero. brace it. That's the thing. And then yeah. Tiny pods 4 is very hard to play around. Um... Easier ways of doing it would be something like the Tusk and running in with Jakiro. Um, Barrow would have been Perfect. pretty solid. I mean, the issue with that matchup is Bulldoze actually gets removed. It's one of the few things yeah. that actually removes Bulldoze. So if you come from a weird angle, you just destroy them. But otherwise, Oracle can play it. Uh, but that kind of style, you just want to run at them. You want to set tempo really fast so Oracle can't sit back and just spam out his heals. We'll have to see what Darkseid do go for. This is usually where they do pick up their pods for because most of the time they do try and leave their draft as ambiguous to the end. You know, we saw that yesterday. We saw that in this first game where they do pick up the leaner towards the end. And you're not still 100% sure. Obviously, we saw the draft yesterday, so we knew yeah. exactly that Musical was going to pick up the leaner. But it gets to a point where you're like, where are they seriously going to go? And most of the time, in those few uh, few minutes before you do actually get into the game, that's when you start oh, theorizing. Oh, yeah! <laughs> You are on point today. Roglet has not, uh, Ronglet has not turned up to the ESL studio. Roglet, today. We're, Roglet. We're, no, we're 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 today. <laughs> just just Rightlet. today. It's it's the the first uh, week of the season special where I'm actually correct. So the rest <laughs> it's just downhill. It just it's all gets downhill. Worse. You start from the top and you go down. I mean, it just it does show that the teams are thinking more about the draft though, because a lot of the times I'll, you'll sit here and make a prediction, and then I just go left field with a comfort pick anyway that might not suit the draft. Where they've now thought about drafts, they've now thought more of a team, they've now practiced more heroes together. So they're more comfortable picking what is quote unquote best. And Darkseer Oracle. I mean, it's a combo that has been very good for a long time. Darkseer has been a hero that has been absolutely crazy in that offlane and being able to combo it with something like a Sand King providing it a lot more damage. It does force Sand King pause 4 though. So I mean, it means it's not it is bad. Oracle 5. So Shag is playing that pause 5 Oracle. I can't, I can't imagine you're going to go carry Sand King. EJ, I don't think he's played a game of Sand King competitively in his life, so <laughs> it's definitely going to be a pause for Roger Dodger Sand King. I mean, he does play those those uh, stun. Yeah, he likes the blink initiation yeah. pause fours. He likes to, like that greedy, all on me kind of mentality. Yeah, which is fine if it works for you, it works. I think he has played that very well in a lot of games, but it's just so much stress and pressure to put on a pause four. Yeah. We'll have to see if he is able to greet himself up and get that blink dagger. We saw on that grim strike he was able to do that quite handily. Got himself a nice little uh, net worth towards the end of the game. But dark sided, they need. I feel like this is probably going to be the music hero, right? You need something. I feel, I would I would love a tide. Well, I I honestly would be fine with them picking a tide hunter, centaur, that kind of style. Even a wraith king would be fine. Tide Hunter, there we yeah. go. We were, both, we were both thinking, and we're like, we want to see the watermelon. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it really does suit Darksided, right? This is the team fight hero that they needed. They can play around Musica. He understands his time. He understands when he's strong. And once he gets that Blink Dagger, he can even just go in for something like the Guardian Grease, the Crimson I don't Guard. even think you go Blink anymore. I think you go either Phase Boots or Arcanes. You get one or two braces. You get a Vlad's. And then you brawl. And yeah. then you can go the pipe with the crimson, depending yeah. on what you need. I think pipe's going to be more apt, looking at what Zen 9 have. And the best part of it is, you go tag team on task, you go anchor Ooh. smash, and it hits for like 350 at level 3. And you get a and you get gush in there as well. Yeah, it's Ooh. so much damage. And obviously, gush, tag team, so much extra physical damage against what most likely will be an oracle plus one lane. And it limits the amount of picks, so you can't pick PA anymore because that PA is just going to get blown up over yep. and over again. Juggernaut is still pickable. Life still is quite hard yep. because there's so much physical damage. You rage. They don't yep. really care, and they just brawl into you. What about something like a baller Slark here? Is Slark I think Slark would be very nice. I think that, for the that's okay. definitely Baller's hero. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a baller hero. Baller Classic has played that quite a lot. Played it to a very high standard as well. And it allows yeah. him to, to put pressure on that tight hunter. Just single yeah, that double melee out. versus Razor and Oracle is quite a hard lane. But 
The other alternative is they try to static link and all of a sudden you're taking 400, 500 damage from nukes anyway and they're going to fight through it because tag team's damage doesn't matter yeah. about the static link. Well, it's going to be a fairly strong lane, but Zen9, they're really starting to shoehorn themselves into a fairly kind of early game brawly team as well. You know, Dark Sided, they've got the Ember Spirit. He's not crazy when it comes to scaling in the late game, but he is very good towards that mid game as well. Yeah. So I feel like this game's going to be a bloodbath. Zen9 wanted to be a bloodbath, that's for sure. Dark Sided have picked a lineup that's just another well rounded, balanced lineup. That's I, I actually love to see Dark Siders drafting sometimes yep. because there's never one thing we like, this hero has to get farmed to win. We've even seen Spectre picks where it's not even the Spectre has to get farmed to yep. win. Like we've seen Reverie start the momentum and keep the momentum throughout the entire game, not just like relinquish it yep. to Baosu. So when you have these we're under drafts, you can pretty much pick whatever carry you want. You can pretty much pick whatever mid you want, as long as the other one is stable and solid and can, can fight. Ember Spirit is perfect for that. The Slider of Fist, the tag team combo is going to be great. Obviously, Tidehunter's Ultimate is going to be a fantastic refresh, restart the fight. And there's oh, the OD. Okay. I was going to say, will Zen 9 get rid of the Owl Devourer here for Reverie? But they get rid of the Lena, and so they pick up the OD themselves. I mean, it's it's something that I talk about every time I see an OD. Is this going to be a Reverie Sniper? Um, sniper won't die at all here. Like, how do you run at a Sniper when Tusk, Tide Under, and Ember are stopping you? And Jakiro can set up a lot of DPS on the high grounds kind of thing. Sniper would be a fantastic pick. Um... He still has Viper. Yeah, that's playable. That's viable. Um, I don't think. I think Ember Spirit has to be the carry now. Yeah, like, I think Bowser has to play that, and he's not really fantastic on the mid lane. Yeah, and we snip a yes! snapper. Thank you, Reverie, for making me right again. See, that's what I love. That that was probably the safest, best yep. pick for a well-rounded lineup, and they said, "Yep, we're happy to play it." Yeah, it is a good uh, matchup here for the sniper in that mid lane, and we know how Reverie does do in those advantageous matchups. So Bows is going to be taking that M Spirit. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the new set, or he doesn't have the new Ultra Rare Immortal either. So he's got double divine rapiers to start the game. That's got to be OP. That's like, it, can't, <laughs> it can't be balanced. But either way, I feel like this is a really good draft here from Dark Side and Zen Nine. They have all their work cut out for them. Who's going to be the sniper killer this game? It has to be the OD, right? I think Shatan has to find it. That's a Shatan plus five. Oh. Sanking, by the way. We were talking about Roger being the Oracle picker over Shatan. I was half right, because I, I was like, nah, they're not going to do it. But They're going to do it. They're going to do it. They're going to be greedy. Um, I think it has to be Shatan. Shatan yeah. has to somehow find a Blink Dagger. Because if you're relying entirely on EJ to get on top of Reverie, you're in strife. Because that's your core jumping in to what most likely will be a blind fight. You're yeah. not going to have the BKB till about 26 minutes. So before that, there's an entire window where... You're going to get kited. You're going to get smashed. And Reverie might progress to a Midas and that cooldown reduction yeah. talent and just get a bit too chubby. It's going to be a, a fairly hard game here for Zen 9 because, I mean, I feel like this draft is just really well-rounded and really strong here from Darkseid. They have good ways of taking towers. They have good ways of fighting. They're not cooldown reliant. They have a tanky frontliner. And it just means that it's all going to be on Zen 9 whether or not they can play fast and whether or not they can get on top and shut down this Reverie Sniper. Because as you said, he gets that Midas up, he gets that cooldown talent, he gets a, you know, even a Necro Box, he can really start to become a big boy here on this Sniper. And we've seen it before when Sniper, he gets those carry late game items and he is very, very hard to deal with and dishes out quite a lot of pain. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Zen 9's roster is quite stable as well. Like, they've got a bit of everything. They've got nice team fight on the OD, the Sand King, and the Dark sea. They've got good farm on the Razor, and they've also just got good sustainability because of the Oracle and the Razor. They're both fantastic for setting up a frontline hero. But they're looking for something. Yeah, Darkseid are realizing their level one is very, very strong here. They're going to see if they can get themselves the first kill. Ball is playing extremely safe here on the Razor. Same with EJ on the OD. So they have no eyes on nobody. Uh, the thing with the Parlor's just playing this perfectly, and like, you can see in the bot lane, they're, they're actually just pushing Musica to the jungle. Like he's he's sitting all the way here. They've done the same thing on both sides. They've realised they're both quite strong at level one. Neither of them really work out though, which is unfortunate. Yeah, but this does look like a dark side. They're going to go for a, a very early aggressive try lane here against Baller on the Razor. They're throwing two melee heroes at him, and that means that Musica is going to have, I feel like, a lot easier lane against the Darks here as well as the uh, the Oracle, right? Yeah, probably. Like I mean. You need level two. You need both of these. You need Kraken and Anchor Smash. Anchor Smash to farm, Kraken to not die. Yep. And if you go one or the other, you're kind of useless. But Bala, he's looking for something. He doesn't quite get it, unfortunately, for them. 
Just, just aggressing just quite hard onto Dark Sider, but they get themselves two runes. Zen 9 get themselves two runes as well. Mm. We've got 50 50 here on the runes, and this is just going to be the creep cut. It's pretty much the Dark Sider special. Like, cut the level one way, which you don't see often. They're just going to body block it, kill it with the, the double um, iron shell. And it works. I, I don't see this often, but it's going to really put music around a tower. Unfortunately, it's a tight hunter. Yep. They are throwing an aggressive try line here towards bottom. So Music is going to get that fortune then channeled up on top of him. He's only level one when it comes to that iron shell. They're doing quite a lot of damage. They get the second iron shell and the bar strike on top. So Music is going to be the first blood. So I mean, Zen 9, they set up this aggressive try line. They get the first kill key. And I believe this is just going to be Oracle moving himself back towards top. So both teams expecting stock standard lanes. Both teams going for the aggressive try lane and kind of just dodging each other. Yeah, it worked out really well for Zen 9. But the big thing is, now that you've gone back to the duo lanes, you've gone Riz up here, they just go straight on top oh, of okay. it. Okay, the tag team comes out. They kind of come forward. The dual breath on top. Baosu is doing so much damage, and he has the side of Fist as well. So Riz, he TP top, so he has to walk yeah, back here when he respawns. This is a big walk of shame for Riz right now. And you've committed to a tri lane top lane now. Like, Does Riz come back up here? Or do they do they finally send someone to make a duo lane? I think they might wait for Riz to TP uh, to walk himself back up to top, and then just going to TP back bottom. Oh, they do come back forward here with the tag team on top. Shatan's taking quite a lot of damage. Pyro strikes all the way back in, but that side of Fist is doing so much work. They almost take out the Sand King, but Shatan gets himself far enough away. Bowser, he's having a free time. Yeah, Bowser's going to get a lot of farm in this lane, and if you look at the other two matchups. They honestly should be going both dark side its favor. Razor should get more farm in this lane, but Tide Under can use it better in the early game. That's the big thing. Like you see here, he has no damage whatsoever. He just doesn't care. He just gets a farm anyway. Yeah. With that Quelling Blade and the Anchor Smash, you do so much damage to these creeps. It doesn't really matter. And as you said, you know, Music is okay with how this lane's going to go. Mid's going to go fairly uh, fairly okay for them. Reverie is doing quite well. I really like this build, the no shrapnel build. Um, just maxing out the take aim and the headshot does quite a lot of work for you early on. Because yeah, that think, way he can he can distance himself from yeah, the OD. Right? I think you can go like level 4, 5, 7 and 8. All shrapnel though. Yep. Because once you get these two levels in take aim, it distances yourself from the astral imprisonment. You can get the high ground hit. So if you're standing here with the, the extra take aim, the um, active, you can actually get it from the other side of the high ground. Which means no mischance, no worries. So all these lanes are going fairly well. You know, even though Music is going up against a fairly disadvantageous lane, he's still doing really well. Sitting fourth here, the bar strike comes forward, though they have used the tag team. He's going to come forward here, out on the rears. The Searing Chains keeps him in line for a little bit longer. His Iron Shells are doing quite a lot of work. The Surge comes forward. How much damage do they have? They need another side of Fist, but the Snowball comes forward. The Fortune's end keeps Bowser in place, but it doesn't keep him in place long enough. They're fighting inside of this Sandstorm, so Bowser, he has to get his way out of this. And Roger Dodger taking so much damage, but he turns around... Xavier will pay the price for Darkseid, but I think they're stuck okay. Out there. He's dead too. he doesn't have the Sandstorm to come back in, and Baus is going to get another. Actually, it is Tobbs with the double kill. So this Jakiro is doing so much work top, and the tri v tri is going into Darkseid's favour. Yeah, I mean, this is just... It's too much damage coming out of this tag team. Three heroes all getting the auto-attacks off the Slide of Fist. I wouldn't be surprised... Yeah, I was about to say, if he maxes the Slide of Fist, purely just so he can have that massive amount of tag team damage. Yeah, because he gets the tag team bonus damage, and then he gets the, the bonus damage from Slide of Fist as well. Yeah, it's just a lot. That That's why you saw damage. he just got absolutely chunked on wrist there. He wasn't expecting it. Didn't realise the actual damage potential of this lane, and... They're going to keep brawling here top. The two-man bar strike comes out. Xavier's going to come forward, buying a little, little bit of time with the snowball. He's going to stand here and try and man fight with the tag team, but that's so much damage coming out from the sandstorm, coming out from the iron shell as well. And Shatan, he went for the greedy auto attack, so he doesn't get the iron shell damage. And Shatan getting around here by Biasu. Another little bar strike back through gets the Tobbs kill. So they're winning. They're kind of evening this out. Yeah, it's going to be an absolute bloodbath in this lane. But... How are the other lanes going to go? That's the big question. And you can see here, Sniper's starting to pull ahead. He's actually gone completely into take aim. He doesn't even need the shrapnel at all. Um, he just doesn't want to get caught out. That's basically how he's playing this lane. I really like this. And look at that coming double double range. Yeah, that is disgusting. Um, he's going to go straight for these Wraith Band builds. You know, you go triple Wraith Band, go into that hand of Midas, and then you start becoming scared on this hero. You know, shrapnel, it is a really good ability, but it doesn't help you lane all too much. Yeah, and oh, this is, top this lane, is absolute Shatan is taking so much more damage. Xavier's the one that turns around. Baus is going to get on top of Riz here. They got all three of them in. The dual breath hits on to both of these heroes. But Xavier, again, pays the price for Darkseid. Baus, he wants to come back in, but he's taking so much damage from these iron shells. Baus, a little bit of a misplay by him. Roger gets a return kill there with the purifying flames. 
Yeah, it's starting to look very good for this uh, this top lane if you're Zen 9. You should be losing this lane a lot more than you actually are. And Shatan, he gets the runes, they get four runes. That's that's how you win the early game. They're four bounty runes, they get the shrine up. Reverie is doing well in this sniper mid. He's gone the Midas build as well. He's got that prepped and ready. I wouldn't, yeah, he's gone the gloves of haste. He's gone that three wraith bands. And he's starting to really put it to EJ. All the snowballs coming forward. They have to tag team as well. He has to use the Astro Imprisonment. How much time does he save? Doesn't look like there's any TPs coming in from the rest of Zen 9. So EJ looks like he's certainly going to be going down here. They have the Assassinate if they want to use it as well. Xavier's is going to die to the tower. The Assassinate Reverie doesn't even want to use it. Saving his mana here. It's a bit surprising because I think if he assassinates straight away, I think Xavier lives. So it was quite a greedy play for him. And we're seeing, like, on the other side, Music has got six. He's got that ulti. He's actually somehow slightly out leveled. Bala. I guess it was those first couple of waves where he didn't have to deal with Bala. Yeah, and plus the melee, you do get a bit, bit more favoured in the lane, obviously, because you can walk away. Oh, Bala's going in. Going underneath the tower there, he doesn't get the auto attack, so the tower doesn't aggro towards him. So Musica loses 84 of his damage, so he's hitting for negative 10. Yeah, it's going to be hard now with the anchor smash. It gives you the extra bonus, but you still want to have both. And, oh, and it looks like Xavier gets another kill on a Riz top, so he's going to die to the Sandstorm as well with the Iron Shell on top. Shatan's one that picks that up. The Riz gets himself a kill. The Barrow Strike forward, and he's going to get himself a free solo kill on a Baosu. He probably will die for it, but worse? Oh, oh no, he doesn't even die. He's fine. That's a big stick there coming out from Shatan, keeping himself alive. And, you know, usually Shatan's a plus five player, but at this point he's looking more like an offlaner. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed that they let that happen, to be honest. The snowballing forward here on a baller, but he does have that eye storm coming out with the Ravage on top. Hits onto Roger Dodger. How much save can they come from this Oracle? Gets the Fates Edict and the Fortune Sand. They're coming forward to get both these zeros stuck together. And Dark Sided, I think they've overplayed their hand just a little bit here, not expecting Roger Dodger to be bottom. Yeah, fantastic rotation from Roger. Realizing that. They're probably going to want to move this Tusk around. He's, he's done a lot top, but he started to feed a few kills. And they finally find him, get the kill, and double save. And that's the Ravage use as well, so he can't do anything for the next two minutes. Yeah, Tobbs is just trying to fight out these creeps, trying to get them away from Shatan, who is sitting quite low inside of this sand. So he throws out the dual breath, and that's going to hit him as well. The Ice Bath hits on top, but that's a lot of damage. Shatan does misplay the, uh, the Barrow Strike there, and he eventually will burn down. But the Iron Shell, it's doing its work here. Oh, but, Riz. Oh, Riz. Again, Xavier comes forward with the Ice Shards, but he gets the Surge all the oh, way out, and the they miss the though. Chains. A little bit unfortunate there for Biasu. The Musica, he's going to try and farm underneath this T1 Tower with Baller not being there. And we're going to see how this lane does go. I think, you know, Dark Side of the doing okay. You know, these lanes are going fairly even. Oh. Yeah, you're losing a few kills, but Reverie's doing great in this mid lane, right? Look at his last hits and denies. And they're going for something. I, I'm I'm not sure if you want to fight this if you're Roger. He could get stuck here and just get killed if they tag team. But he has got that extra extra bit of damage. The Iron Shell doing work. His Fates Edict means that he doesn't have to take all too much damage from that uh, dual breath, which is at level 3 right now for Tobbs. And you look at mid. He's still just slowly peeping away. Nothing special. Getting a few more denies here and there. But he has 26 denies on this. How do you fight. gank him is the question. Like, He's gone three levels take aim, and now he's starting to get the shrapnels up. As soon as he gets the shrapnels up, that's when you can't gank him. Because he can just put three down under tower, and he's good to go. Well, top side, they do get the bar strike out here on a bounce. He has no way of getting away from this, actually, with the side of fist and the searing chains. They certainly do, so they get rid of Riz there. They do use the macro pie out on top. Shatan has to be careful of this, but this is the first rotation from Reverie. He's peeping away, he's shooting from the backside, and they get one more. And that's three going down on the side of Zen 9. I thought Bowser was going to pay the price, but he gets and they out commit, with the side of And they commit the TP on the Bala. So now Bala's stuck up here for a while. They're, pe they're, they're, they're drawing it out. Roger said no, go home, run <laughs> away. Like, he's just bailed out completely. He's realized that if Bala's there, they're probably going to dive him. They're not going to care. And Ravage is up again, so they didn't know where he was. And we know he's farming here, but for Zen 9, they're playing it smart. They know that big ultimate's up, and they don't want to be a part of a team fight with it. Yeah, after losing that tier one tower, bottom ball is like, there's no real place for me bottom. I don't want to get ravaged. I don't want to get caught out. So he's going to get himself away, try and put pressure towards his top side. And this is this is where he starts to accelerate his farm, right? You know, he's got a decent amount of levels. He can start pressuring these heroes. He doesn't have to worry about getting ganked all too much because Roger looks like he is going to be babysitting him for now. Yeah, Roger's going to have to babysit people for a while now, but he's getting the levels. He's going to be six with this, this time coming up. 
I hope they don't commit up here. They're, they're going to kill Roger anyway, oh, I think. Oh, the snowball comes forward, but Reverie's here. The wall comes down. Doing a little bit of work, but Xavius is sitting in the front lines. He's the one that doesn't need to go down. And Reverie, though, he's getting gone on in the backside. And we're saying, how are you supposed to kill this sniper? And it looks like Riz just bo uh, sends himself all the way to the backside. And Biasu, he does dodge a lot of that uh, epicenter damage, but he's still stuck in here with the Sand King. And how much damage can they do? They do enough. So they keep Biasu alive, and they lose four on the side of Z9. They get the big kill of Reverie, but is it enough? Ah, it's definitely worth it if you're Dark Side. Like, look at this. 1,500 gold. You've lost all your cores. I, I guess EJ didn't come into the fight, and that's the, that's the small victory you can take out of it. He's building a Midas, but he got beaten. He got beaten by the Peep Boy. The sniper himself has just been farming up a storm. You can see here the net worth. He's slightly ahead of Bala, and Bala died in that fight. Yeah, once that Midas has come up, once he gets that level 10, he has hit level 10, but he hasn't leveled up the uh, cooldown reduction just yet. So yeah. that first he use got, of the mice. He got level 10 off that, and he's actually leveled Trapnel again. nothing. Yeah, he's, he leveled he's Trapnel again. No, he's held it. 3, 6, 8, 9. Yeah, he's still held the spell. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. He's taking the cooldown reduction. He's realizing very early that the main stay of the damage is going to be Baosu. So the rest of the thing, he wants to be a distraction. I wouldn't be surprised if he just cleans up this, goes all the way up to the shrapnel charges, and then at 25, that's when the fights become insanely hard to deal with. Yeah, I believe it's like, what, nine shrapnel charges on top side? And do you use Ash for the this tag team doesn't get done, but looks like the Ravages here! Musica hits four heroes on the side of Zen 9. They have to use the False Promise on EJ himself. For this, Dodger, Dodger. this is not good. Another Ash comes forward. Biasu is looking for more. They want to get rid of this OD, and they certainly will. They have to use the Sanity's Eclipse, but it doesn't get anybody that just uses a little bit of mana. The Ice Path cutting off Shatan's escape. He's stuck here in the trees. The bow strike closer towards the tower, but Musica doesn't care. He's going underneath it. He gets a double kill, and they lose three. Looks like they potentially could be losing four. Reverie. He's trying to find Riz, he's trying to cut off the path oh, that he huge needs, but it's Xavier. a beautiful ice, but, uh, ice shards there from Xavier. So they collect four, they don't lose Baller because he wasn't even anywhere near that fight. I mean, a bit of a heads up play for Bala to be pushing this bot lane. He gets the tier one, he's yeah. pushing towards the tier two, but you're losing these team fights really badly now. Like, they're starting to get a bit out of control. They they did use all their big team fight ultimates, obviously Music are getting that massive Ravage off, hitting three or four people. And now, do you fight again? Looks like they're trying to. Musica is still a big boy, though. He doesn't rely 100% on the Ravage. And the fact that Biasu, as well as Reverie, are both easy heroes to rotate into this lane. I like this. The they put the sentry where you can't see them. Even if you place the sentry up here, you only ever see it if you walk into this tree line. So they know Shatan's here. Oh, the bar strike forward here. They're going to be able to catch out Biasu. He doesn't have a remnant in a defensive position. He's going to have to throw one away. He gets himself far enough away from the fortune's end. There is another one a little bit further in the trees. But Bala gets caught out in the bottom. That's a four-man rotation from Darkseid, and they take out Baller. And Darkseid, they're tearing him apart. They're moving far better across the map. Yeah, they're trying to get the kill onto Biasu, but it's so goddamn hard with those remnants. Yeah, the remnants, and he also baited that team to commit. Like, once, once you see three heroes here, and then he saw EJ near the end, they realized, oh... Bala's alone. They all jump on top of him. They didn't use anything massive as well. They used no massive cooldown ultimates. Obviously, they used probably two shrapnels here. That's that's low. But that's still a huge victory, taking out their carry. You lose the tier one top, but it had to go down eventually. That is true. There's an eventuality that most of these towers will go down. But Reverie. He has that cooldown reduction, he has that hand of minus, and he is starting to skyrocket. He is starting to pull ahead of the pack here in the yeah. net worth chart. And Bowser, he's staying with it. 5, 2, and 11. He's been in the lane that's just had absolute disasters happening. Dying everywhere. Every, like, it seems like they're playing nine-man Dota top lane. <laughs> honestly. And Bowser is still. He's second in the net worth. He's keeping ahead of Bala. He's keeping ahead of EJ. And he's only going to get faster now that he's starting to get the levels in the flame guard. Obviously, he went max slide of fist for the lane. Just that tag team damage was huge. He almost has that javelin up as well. And that's when his physical damage starts to increase a bit more. And once Reverie starts getting a few more of those items, I believe... Okay, he's got the full treads now. He has three Wraith Bands. He's going to go for a Maelstrom of his own. Yeah, double Maelstrom is pretty solid. And he's going to go for the auto attack damage. He's, he's not committing to the Necro Book. The old adage of the yep. uh, mass cooldown reduction abilities. This is probably the safer build, and we talked about Dark Side. They're always, they're always well rounded. They're always stable, and they're just showing it even in the the small little things. Yeah, well, Musica he has that Ravage at the ready now. 
They want to start pressing their net worth advantage. They want to start pulling away here from Zen 9. So who are they going to look for? They want they EJ need, or They or need Bala. EJ or Bala. And they, obviously they saw EJ in the, the top lane. He's going to bail out there. So they're not going to get anything but this tier 1 tower. Not what you want for a smoke gang. Especially with Musica having that up. And they trade the they trade the runes as well. They only trade two for two. Yeah, so they're going to get both bounty runes top. Musica is going to click those. They get a nice little deep ward here into the jungle. So Xavier they're has still eyes on EJ. EJ. Do they find him here? I don't think they do if he walks Oh, he just popped his head out. They found him. Yeah, they they ping him, they ping him. Musica just pinged here, so they're going to go for this kill here. We're, we're missing a kill bot, but... Roger Dodger just bails out. So Roger Dodger did have to use that uh, false promise on himself, but he's okay for now. Alright. EJ again, playing the safe route, runs away. Musica not getting anything done with that little, little dive there. We'll have to see... How the rest of this goes for Darkseid and Z9. But who who trades better? Who trades these towers better? I um I think just purely off the fact that you've got Sniper and you've got this Liquid Fire, which really enables, even at level 1, that extra 4 or 5 seconds of slow attack speed. You could see what then, it barely killed the Creep Wave with that extra Fortify with those 3 auto attacks. And Shatan's dead here. Shatan yeah, they is find him in, in the trees. Really they have place. the Assassinate and the Ice Path on top. Tom was trying to defend this tier 2 tower, but unfortunately he didn't have the HP to do it. So they're going to trade tier 2 for tier 2. Yeah, this is definitely a winning train for Darksided. Their heroes with gold will do more, where I think Bala needs a lot more items than Baosu does. And obviously, OD needs a lot more items than Sniper, because Sniper can play so safe naturally, he doesn't actually have to be in the fight to do damage. He can sit so far back with the shrapnels, where OD has to be on top. He has to have that BKB, he has to have that blink. Maybe even one more item on top of that. Like you can see, he's gone the four stuff BKB with the three null talismans. He and was he's holding for a Midas earlier on as well. I think he should have gone it. To be honest, they're losing the fights with or without him, so he might as well have committed to the Midas. Yeah, well, Musica, he does have that uh, Vladimir's offering up. This is what you talked about in the draft. He's got phase Vlad's allows him to kind of play this five man easy Dota. Now the fact that Reverie's starting to pull ahead, they've got the Maelstrom here on Bowser as well. I believe that he has the Maelstrom on Reverie as well, right? Yes. Yeah, plus a thousand. He's rich. Look at him. Oh, and I think Roger's a dead boy here. Yeah, Xavier has the haste rune. He has the ice shards on top. So Roger, you can't walk away from that. It does <laughs> stop the TP. I love that. I love just the like the absolute optimism <laughs> to think you're going to get away from that. I mean. You miss all the shots that you don't take. Uh, I mean... <laughs> Maybe Xavier unbound his snowball key. And his punch key. Yeah. And there was no assassinate. And there was no... In, in a 1v1 bar. kind of situation, forcing out the snowball is alright. But it's just funny that there were so many heroes around him. Like, he obviously <laughs> couldn't have known that. He got hit by, like, four stuns before he got <laughs> away. <laughs> But either um, way, Darkseider, they are really pressing their advantage right now. They're putting so much pressure on a Zen 9. And they don't really have the kind of late game heroes to pull this apart as well, right? Yeah, they do have the OD, but Razor's not really a hero that you see going extremely late and yeah. winning, right? And usually when you see a Razor, you see this net worth lead meant to be the other way. Like, OD, Razor are both fantastic mid-game heroes. Dark is meant to win his lane, but like that XP is the big thing. Like, these heroes have fantastic talents, and they're not meant to be this great early. Like, we've talked about Ember being pretty good without items. He just needs levels. He has items as well. He's, he's a chubby boy. He's sitting still quite a bit above the other cores on Zen 9. And they're just racking up these towers. Yep, so they're getting rid of the tier 2 tower. And Zen 9, they really can't fight him this they're Ravage, going for right? Lore, I think. Can they, they, they can't fight into Ravage. Because like if they fight into Ravage trying to commit onto the sniper, then Mystica's just going to Ravage the entirety of their yeah. team. I think they wait. They, they literally have to wait till that BKB comes up. And there's not much you can do. They just have to let this happen. There's another crit wave coming in and... They don't have a fortify for the second wave. Yep, they're just going to throw the liquid fire up. They're just going to send music to the front lines. But it looks like They've Dark Sided. They're getting safe. mind gamed a little bit, so they're just going to fall back. I'm fine with that. Though. Like you've got the half health damage. Like it's not going to heal. You're playing safe, controlled Dota. You know you've got the late game actually sorted. This sniper and this Ember are going to do so much work, and they don't really have the things to lock them down. Like they've got two stunts on their entire lineup, and one of them is Astral, which helps Ember to get away. They don't have anything after that other than Shatan's stun. And they're looking for Bala again. They do and have that ward in the jungle. And this time he's going to get caught. He's. He... Are they going to be able oh. to find him? He's very close to that BKB. He did see them. He did see them. Xavier's looking for him still, though. 
He oh. finds him with the ice shards. Looks like Baller gets himself far enough away from Dark Sided, but they're going to start pressuring this tier 2 tower. And when is the point as Zen 9 are happy to fight? It is the BKB, I'd imagine, right? Yeah, it's, it, he's getting close, but the thing is, this BKB is going to put him up to about 1800 health, obviously. He can still get peeped down. He can still get hit by Musica. He can still get hit by this tag team. He can oh, still die. Does connect here on a Shatan, so they know where he is. The Remnant all the way forward here from Biasu, getting himself closer and closer to the Sand King, but he gets close enough to get stunned. Now comes the Ice Path, the punch was a little bit too late, but the punch is on to EJ instead. <gasps> he dodges he throws it. out the Sanjis, and that's how you do it. That's how you get rid of the OD. Reverie's getting forced to TP away, he lost most of his damage, and the False Promise comes out on a Roger Dodger yet again. The Ice Path is buying enough space for the Plasma Field instead. Closes the gap for Baller, so this big KB, the use did win them a decent fight. I mean, I don't think it was really one. Okay, if they right, get Musica, this win. could if, be a win. If Musica had gotten away here, that would have been an absolute loss. Because you're looking here, support for carry right now, it's it's not worth it. But now Musica's going to die. He's eventually going to die. Yeah. It took a while to get rid of him, but they do get rid of him nonetheless. And Baller, with that freshly used BKB, does net themselves two kills. It does allow them to see that they can start winning these fights, but EJ, he used the Absolute Imprisonment there onto Shatan, but as soon as that was used, Xavier's like, okay, mate, I'm just going to punch you into the air, and then Reverie's going to shoot you down. Do they find him here, though? EJ might get found out. If, he, if they see him farming, Baosu and Xavier can definitely come around and kill him. I think the ward just died before he TP'd in. Baosu's not looking for it. No, he's just going to farm up. Baosu wants to increase his net worth first. Going that Lincoln's as well. Stops the Barra Strike, stops Fortune's End. So. Oh, and do they find anything here? No. No, does miss the side of Fist Searing Chains combo. But yeah, we saw that. That first BKB really, really enabled that fight. And you can see he got a lot of gold from that as well. He got the farm afterwards. He's going straight towards this blink. He needs to jump on top of this sniper. You saw it. As soon as Sniper saw the Razor, he's like, okay, I'll TP out. Where if you have the blink, he's not going to be ready for it. He's probably going to panic TP, and Shatar might get a stun on it. And that's when the, rate, uh, the, the um, sniper can die. Yep. On the other side, though, he's got an entire Hurricane Pike built up. Yeah, that is true. It's going to be very scary for them to try and deal with this sniper early on. But they are starting to build towards it. They understand that getting rid of the sniper is the way to go. He didn't get the shrapnel slow either. He went at the attack speed. So he's committing. He's actually committing for this damage talent, despite the um, cooldown reduction at level ten. He still wants the damage build, which is which is fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. He's already gone the pike. He's gone that safe item, and now he can do whatever he wants. The idea rune here on Revery means that they should be able to secure themselves. Roche. They have the Vladimir's offering. They have the medallion. But Zen Nine, the this is a risky this. fight. They've got the ravage still. They're walking forward. Coming in, Baller's getting caught out. He does have Baller's that BKB, but look at oh how God. much damage that is going in. They have to use the false promise. He gets himself through here, but the Ravage comes out instead. Musica gets onto the back line. They get one. They punch Roger Dodger into the air. The false promise has been used, and Reverie, he's going to die, though, as well. So Zen 9, this isn't a complete loss for them. They get two nice kills, and they have to use the buyback here on Roger Dodger. It but looks I mean, that's so not... good for Darkseid. They just didn't a a estimate how much healing that ultimate would do for Rog Dodger. He keeps Bala alive. Bala comes back in with almost full health and jumps on Reverie and kills him. And that was pre-BKB as well. Riz was able to get in, provide a little bit more here for Bala. And the surge onto the Razor is nothing to scoff at. He's able to zoom around these fights, really stick on these heroes, and that's usually what happens. You see here... They're like, oh, okay, this is going to be a bad fight. Ball is getting extremely low. The false promise comes out at Roger. They force them back in. Musica hits a beautiful ravage onto the entirety of Zen 9. But on the backside, Shatan, the blink bar strike epicenter forces Reverie to go extremely low, and he wasn't able to fight. And that's when they were able to get in. Another snowball forward here from Roger Dodger. Brings him up to the high ground. Xavier's okay. Biasi comes in. The ice path on top, keeping Baller at bay. And they have to use the wall, but a wall for naught. Yeah, they're all posturing around this mid lane. They're wanting this Roshan. No one wants to give it up. And they can't really. Like, the first Roshan is so crucial right now because of these team fights being so close. The first person with an age is, could just win a team fight and take a Rax. And that's one thing we weren't really talking about was the Shatan actually has picked up his Blink Dagger on this Sand King. We saw in that last fight in the replay where Shatan was able to blink Burrow Strike Epi onto the backside. He caught out the Jakira. He caught out Reverie. He got three people with that one. He almost killed Reverie alone. And then obviously getting the supports as well meant they couldn't really chase him up on it. Just an absolute fantastic play from Shatan, keeping his team in it. I think without that three-man combo, 
Oh, looks like they're going to fight towards the Roche Pit as well. Shatan's not here, Amizuka's not here either. Ash Imprisonment comes out on the task. Nice little side of his shooting chains combo. The BKB has been used here by EJ. Same with Baller. Onto the backside, he finds out Reverie. He's found the sniper, and there's no way to stop this BKB from Baller. And he's got himself another kill onto the sniper. The Barrow Strike forward hits into onto the Jakiro. Biasu can't do much because he has no team to help him. Amizuka is still on the bottom side of the map, and they realize that Tubbs is dead. They're going to get themselves a T1, and this is starting to turn back in the favour of Zen 9. We're really starting to get concerned on how they're trying to deal with this sniper, but Bola as well as Shatan putting this game on their back and realising yeah. that they need to kill this sniper. These BKBs have been absolutely crucial at the perfect timing as well. Like You've seen these fresh BKB pickups have won them every single fight so far. You can see double usage. They have to, though. They have to just commit everything to make sure that these fights are playable for them. I think for the next couple of fights... Darkseid have to relax. They have to realize that we can't fight these BKBs. We can't deal with them. And obviously, is BKB the answer for Sniper? I'm not sure, but we're, uh, we'll get to see. Especially because he's pretty much just being linked and come in. Xavier's going to come in with the Ravage on top. Do they steal the Roche yet? Has anybody got it? It does. Muska, he steals the Roche from underneath the nose of Z9. They're going to come back in. The Sanity's Eclipse does a lot of work. But this is Muska's second life. And Biasu, though, he's the one that's getting gone at. He's the one that they want. They get the core kill there. And the Astro Imprisonment comes back out. EJ, he doesn't force himself to the low ground. And Muska's looking for the Riz kill. But the Yule Scepter up keeps him away. And the peep, peep, peep comes from Revry on the backside. They get rid of the OD. Muska's trying to create another fight on the other side. Roger Dodger with the TP all the way away. So Zen 9, they thought it was a magical fight for them, but they lose the Aegis. They got stolen there by Musica. Beautiful play by Darkseid, and Reverie picks up the EJ kill. They lose Baller on top, and this game is going back the other way yet again. Yeah. Those BKB usages are a bigger loss than actually losing those heroes. Like, having EJ die after the BKB charge is absolutely disastrous. The Ravage was huge, gets everyone. I'm not sure how it didn't kill the Roshan, but Dyer somehow get the Roshan last Watch hit. Watch this replay. Xavier comes in, the Ravage on top, hits all five heroes from Zen 9. Musica steals the Aegis on top. The Sanities was great, but it wasn't great enough. EJ took so much damage from this Reverie, sitting on the high ground, peeping away. And we saw here the Astral just buys him a little bit of time, but as soon as he came out of that False Promise, he was too low. He couldn't fight anymore, didn't get to the low ground, and Reverie had all the range in the world. They get rid of him, they get rid of Bowler inside of the Roche Pit as well. They're trying to find Musica, they have linked him up, he's, he's stealing definitely his dead as here. well. There's no way he can get away, he has one charge, but he doesn't have the TP, so he's going to go down. So Musica, you played Magical, mate, but you got caught out just there. And I mean... How are you supposed to pick this Ooh, game? Shadow Blade. I don't mind that. I think he needs that, right? Over the BKB because he needs to get away from Baller. Well, the thing is, Baller and EJ are jumping on top of him. The cores are the only one that are getting anywhere close. Like, Shatan can no longer find him. So if he can get that Shadow Blade, there's no way these two heroes can hold this dust. Like, they're both full slots almost. And if they're holding dust, they've got to be really quick-fingered to deal with it. It's just another one of those things like, does EJ start to hold a gem? It could be a potential... But with the smoke up here now, they're going to try and connect with Shatan in the mid lane. They are looking for a kill. If they can get Baosu, if they can Baosu, get Reverie, it could be big. Tobbs is going to get found out here, surely. He's in the middle of five heroes. Does he say, yeah, uh, there yeah, we go. Yeah, okay, Tobbs is certainly dead here. He has a TP, but you're not going to get away from the vacuum. You're not going to get away from Shatan. And Shatan's looking for more. They're trying to connect here out onto Xavier. They do get the Ashland Imprisonment coming forward. Shatan has the Fire Strike looking in. Reverie, you need to be careful where you're standing, my friend, because you don't want to get caught out as well. Xavier with the snow all the Riz way forward. So they do away. get in there, but it looks like Xavier gets himself away because Riz was looking for more kills. He got the vacuum, he got the wall, but it's not what you needed because Xavier lives because of that. Unneeded greed coming out of Riz there. But fantastic and heads up play from Xavier, realizing that Riz is going to keep pushing. He's just going to relax, get the snowball instantly, and come back out. That was a nice play there by the Tusk. And they only lose 500 gold, which and is. Dark side, they're going to respond with their own smoke now because the BKB was used by EJ, so they certainly know this. They know the wall is there, but they see them. They, they see just, them walk oh, through the wall. A smoke pop just through the wall, uh, and EJ is going to look for the pop on the. He's in Viz as well, so he completely breaks the smoke. So Dark Riz Side, they can't out gonna come forward, but it looks like with a side of few steering chains, they catch out Riz. The assassinate isn't even needed because Bows is the one that gets the kill, so they get rid of the Darks here. And <sighs> if you're a Dark Side fan, count your blessings there. That should not have happened. Zen 9 should not have lost a single hero there. Yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate that Riz was just a bit too far forward. Didn't expect Biasu to be inside of that smoke as well. But Darkseid, they're looking for more. They want somebody else. They found somebody inside of Fist Searing Chains, but it Another doesn't matter. Another BKB popped though. That's that's it's just a small as big little as victory. Kill. Like, you're looking at six-second BKB, and obviously the OD's one is looking seven seconds. 
These fights are going to get very hard because Sniper's now got the Shadow Blade. He's going straight towards that butterfly. You're not going to be able to jump on him and insta-kill him anymore. And those BKB is going to run out really quickly. Yeah, they are pushing out in the bottom lane. So Zen 9, they uh, don't have to take an aggression from all three fronts. They are just going to be aggressed towards the mid lane here. Reverie's the one that's showing. They are sitting Musica as well as Xavier behind him, but they do have a Sentry Ward and an Observer Ward combo. So, Baus is he's going to push the lane out. He's got the safety remnant. By safety, I mean it's all the way up here, but it's somehow safe. <laughs> he has two there as well, actually. Yeah, I, one just ran out, and Musica's looking for more. Musica is looking for Roger Dodger here, and he I think they're going to find him. He's going to find him. He has the False Promise, but I mean, you're using a False Promise. You, 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 you're probably going to die. He does cancel the TP as well. So Roger Dodger is dead. He won't have the False Promise to respawn either. He's just going to pop inside yeah, of the trees. Huge Reverie's amount of damage coming up. out there. Small little pick. They didn't have to commit anything. Reverie's just going to go back to farming, and it's 70 seconds on the deck. There we go. As you said, 70 seconds on the deck without an Oracle because he wants to the other hands get picked off the same way. The pods fires on both these teams is being a little bit too far forward. And I guess, I mean, if he's the one that's going to soak up a gank, he's the one that's going to soak up a gank. You know, it's kind of what you want. You know, you have your pods five, they're pushing out a wave. I mean, it's whatever if they do go down because that's what they're there for. Yeah, I mean, I keep forgetting that Rog is actually playing this pods five completely. Shatan has, hasn't bought wards, he hasn't bought those sentries. He's committed completely to the POS4, and they're happy to swap that around. And it's good to see a team that's comfortable enough to say, I'm better on this hero, you're better on that hero. We can play around this. Yep. Well, they have picked up the BKB now on Bowser as well. These fights are going to be a lot more on individual skill rather than straight up spell usage. And I think he's going to go BKB on Sniper as well. He's tossed around this item build quite a lot. He hasn't really decided what he wants. I think you kind of need it, right? Because you need to get away from the Burrow Strike. You need to get away from the Astrals. It doesn't stop the Razor Link. But other than that, it stops pretty much everything else they're going to try to throw at you. Um, the Bowser is the big one because a lot of the time he's losing his entire mana pool to this hammer. If you get that BKB off, the hammer doesn't do anything. That is true. A negative 1.5 seconds assassinate cast time. Yeah. Is there a reason why people pick that over the knockback? I think you never take the knockback. Ever. I thought it was the best when it first came out. No, no. It, it's, I reckon it's the, it might be one of the worst talents in the game. Really? So the whole issue with Sniper is if they're on top of you, it's too late. The knockback doesn't really stop you from like actually running onto the Sniper because no one runs just forward at him. Yeah. So the big thing with that is it pushes them away when you're trying to catch them. Where the Assassinate instantly stops TP. You can have the quickest hands oh. in the game with the TP. They're trying to find EJ here. He does use that BKB and has the False Promise out as well. So they're committing quite a lot to save EJ. And I think this is the opening that Dark Darksider need. Can and they uh, catch Roger's out Roger? Dead. They do. The Assassinate's coming in. So much damage with the vacuum wall. hits down as well. The FP and the Pyro Strike coming in. But the BKB used from Biasu gets him away from all that damage. They've already taken out Ro Roger Dodger. Can they get Riz as well? The Remnant all the way forward here. EJ does not have his BKB. Biasu's trying to find him on the sideline, but they don't get him. Revery looks like a little Rev's bit... so far away now. He's looking for the pick. He Can finds they it come on back EJ. In? It looks like they do get the kill there on a baller as well. So Bowser is the one that picks that up. EJ is on the backside. He's a little bit too far away from his team. There's no mana left here the on he Bowser either. He gets himself into the trees and they have no way of stopping this. No, they don't. So they get rid of baller. They get rid of the Roger Dodger. But they committed quite a lot from both teams. Yeah, a massive commitment from everyone. But two dead. BKB is used on both sides. And... Nothing lost at all from Mus from uh, Darksided. Yeah, it was a, a big commitment from both these teams. So they get rid of Baller. Rivery had to fall back and use that shrine in that fight. And he's still he's still tossing items. That's he's going go, to go to the end, Joel. Yeah. Um, and yeah, back with this talent. It only helps in the smaller situations where Assassinate ruins every type of BKB TP. And we're seeing what was happening. They were trying to BKT TB over and over again. They found Shatan, the snowball forward. They've already caught him out with the dust, so he knows that he's dead. Burn comes in from Tobbs. They get themselves a Sand King, and they can start aggressing towards this tier 2 tower. Baus is looking for more. Yeah, what a, what a fantastic team play now. Like You can't even say one person on Darkseid have just been playing out of their mind. They're all playing so well. Reverie's still been at this top of the net worth for so long, playing so defensively and smart, making sure he can get the damage out on these heroes. But Xavier and Musica making this front line look so tanky for the fact that he is 2200 health. He doesn't even have that many strength items. Plus four double bracer build, now a more iconic duo.
Uh, the triple bracer when they came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, the five bracers when it came out. Didn't even need boots. They called me a madman when I did that. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Five bracer face boots. Bra breaker. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? It uh, seems pretty disgusting, but either way. And they've gone into the Roche pit now. They've waited for everything to come up bar Ravage. So... Oh, DD Rune on a sniper with a solar crest on top. This is certainly an easy kill. With the tag team on top as well, yeah. they almost have their level 25. See, the Aegis goes on to sniper, so Reverie doesn't have to worry all too much about getting And Music away. is going to look for a pick here. Coming forward, they have Roger they Dodger. Rog. The fortunes that that was some really quick fingers there from Roger Dodger, getting himself away from that gush slow. They oh. do not hit the side of fist. I wouldn't have mind seeing sniper just try to ulti there. Just get that extra slow, get that extra damage, be annoying. Just make sure Roger Dodger has to start using his spells, has to go back to base. It's a short cooldown as well. It's seven and a half seconds. <laughs> you might as well spam that bad boy out. That You're not going to run out of mana. Um, they might be looking for a smoke here. Do they want to smoke into the Aegis though? And into Ravage? I think it's... A, you're seeing the heroes mid now, you might not want to smoke. But if you can find a pick off just on one hero, even pop the Aegis and back out, that's a huge win, because suddenly you're not getting high grounded. And you're not the team that wants to defend high ground against the Sniper. He'll slowly just peep away, and there's no issue. It looks like Baller's going to be the one that's defending this mid lane. As I said, they still have the Ravage at the ready for Dark Sided. This is where Zen I need to be careful with their position, and make sure that Roger doesn't get caught out, and to make sure that he gets a nice false promise off. Yeah, he, he can die so quickly as well, so they have to be so careful on him, because... One little misplay, he gets hit by a true strike slide of fist plus tag team. He probably loses about 900 of his 1100 health. Like, oh, he's a bit tanky now. He's got that bracer. But even then, he needs to be so careful. Especially, he went the GPM talent, so he doesn't have that extra cast range. He can't really sit super far back like we've seen on other oracles. EJ is just farming up now. He has his level 20 talent as well. Shitan, almost at his level Shitan? 20. Shitan, is he going to stay around? Is he going to get caught out? Oh, Bowser's not going to look for him. Musica, on the other hand, though, he's staying so far by himself down here. Fortune's end comes forward. EJ's sitting on the sideline. Doesn't want to go in on that. Doesn't want to commit too far for a Titan because he's quite hard to kill. Yeah, that's insane to see, though. They saw Baosu. They saw Tob's top. They know Musica can only be with up to one other person, and they still don't go on him. That's how much confidence Darkseid would have in knowing he won't die. Well, this game has slowed down quite a bit. Dark Sided, they're the ones with the Aegis in their pockets. They're the ones that are setting the tempo here for Zen 9 They're going to sit back. They're going to farm. Is there any more items on the horizon is... that you think is going to be good for, for Zen 9 that they need? Um, for Zen 9 Nullifier is going to be quite good. Um, this Hex is crucial. But outside of that, there's nothing else you can really buy. Like, this Sheevers could be quite nice for Shatan, but he's not really getting on any targets that don't have BKB anymore. So he's not really getting those supports down. He's not reducing that attack speed purely because of that extra. Oh, well, speaking of supports, they found Roger Dodger here in the trees. Oh! And they just bippity what bumpy, a hero. boom. They send him back. Roger? I mean, not Roger Dodger, Shatan. He's getting caught out here. Reverie is one that's getting by sucked out. Taking quite a lot of damage here from the Sand King. Well, Xavier is looking for Riz. Doesn't catch him there with the Ice Shards. Yeah, so just a nice little pick off on the support. Roger Dodger, bit, bit of overextension from the pos 5 position. But if there's a hero to lose, it's a positive. It's, it's Roger Dodger. Well, <coughs> has that minion near now? Minion and he's got here. five and a bit K. Like, he could honestly just buy out whatever he wants right now. He's still undecided what he wants. Is it the BKB to stop EJ from just jumping on his head? Is it a Silver Edge to stop any kind of silly buggers happening with um, Static? Well, Reverie, he's going to farm this top wave, and EJ does have the Hex. Gets himself into the trees, blinks himself a little bit further up. Doesn't want to dive underneath there because the shrapnel did come out. Yeah, that would have been a very ballsy play to hex onto an Aegis target. If you get TP'd on, all of a sudden you try to get back up, you get that TP off and Assassinate comes out, you die. And if you're dying in the middle of nowhere, well, your BKB's popped. comes back in here from EJ. Looks like they are going to try and go for a hex. A bar strike comes forward, but he misses everybody. A little bit unfortunate there for Shatan. Wanted to open up with the bar strike. Yeah, and this is all... I think they're just going to commit on this tower. 249 health. That's about six or seven auto attacks. He's he's doing it to the mid lane, though. He's just peeping away. He just throws out those shrapnel, gets himself the vision. Starts clicking away, trying to get rid of that tower as quickly as he possibly can. They know that there's going to be a ward up here when he throws up this next shrapnel. The problem is, they can they de-ward this quicker than he can? Oh, the bar strike forward. Lensinger onto Reverie. 
But they're gonna come forward. Music jumps in. He doesn't want to use that Ravage just yet. They're just gonna try and get rid of these walls. They found another Shatar. Touching into the air. They have to use a false promise. The Ravage comes out as well, hitting everybody from Z9. Baller doesn't get his BKB off, but Reverie, he's the one in the backside using that uh, Shadow Blade and the Aegis on top. But they're trying to commit here out on a baller. He doesn't have his BKB left, and he's gonna go down. 90 seconds on the sideline without a Razor. Xavier. Shatan dying with no buyback as well. They committed everything for this base defense. They get nothing but the BKB charge on Baosu. And now the Aegis pops. They've probably still... Yeah, they've used the cheats. So they've used the cheats, used the Aegis. They've got a BKB coming in for Sniper. I think you lose your tier 3 here and you count that... That might be a victory for Zen 9, stopping just that. Oh, they're going to come forward. Out comes the Hex. They realize that there's no Aegis here in the Sniper. He's going to go down. No, EJ's the one that dies instead. Reverie on the backside does die there to the buyback from Baller. But at that point, they've already lost EJ. He has no buyback either. Bowsy on the top side. Xavier's looking for a kill here on a Baller. The Ice Path hits. But I think Dark Side, they want to disconnect. They want to leave this base. They don't want to commit all too hard. The nice little uh, side of Fist gets himself away. The Remnant all the way forward as well from Bowsu. That freshly picked up Agonim Scepter is fast enough. Yeah, that, that Ag stepped up. But losing losing Rev here is... It's a lot. It's a heavy price to pay for what you've you've got. You can see here, no one really won there. The, the buybacks, the BKBs all used. But you got that Tier 3, so you can start to take these Shrines. You've still got a big BKB on Bo, uh, Baosu. And you've got a fresh BKB on the Sniper. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate that he was just being a little bit too far forward there with the Aegis. EJ came in, blew him up, didn't get his own BKB off. It just went down quickly to the side of Dark Side. There's so much physical damage coming out from Bowser, so much physical damage coming out from Referee as well. The nullifier, though, from Baller is going to be huge for them in their next fight. He doesn't have any buyback, so he's going to commit completely to this. Yeah. That's the thing. Both of their, both of their cores don't have buybacks, and their pos 3 right now re resist. He has the buyback, but he's really not being able to get into these fights and do a lot of damage. He gets this blink in, he tries to get that wall, and all of a sudden, he's losing his entire health pool in a matter of like milliseconds to tag team. Yeah, feels like it's quite hard for for Riz to get the game going like he wants to. Music is just going to put himself in front of this shrine, just going to start whacking it down, and Zen9 really can't respond to this. It is only a 7,000 net worth lead here for Darkseid, but it feels like yeah. they're getting the better of this It's fights. 20k XP, though. That's that is a true. lot of XP. That's a lot of levels. You can see Music obviously having the ta that, that little... 15 XP talent. He's already gone that cooldown reduction. He's going to go for that Hex. He's going to have so much more um, stun lock. And does Bowser get caught Z9, here? Z9, they've gone for the old smoke play wraparound and they found Bowser with the Hex on top and the virus strike through. So they get rid of the Ember Spirit. Not expecting that type of play coming out from Z9, but it's what they need to do. They need to start aggressing outside of their base. They need to start pulling this game back in their favor. Yeah, just a real, real aggressive place to farm. Especially he cleared that wave and he started walking about. Just, it's a bit too far for Baosu, but a smoke gank well played from Zen9. Do you think it's time to get these Lincoln Spheres out? They've been called out quite a few times now by these Hexes. Do you think Sniper needs to build one? Do you think Ember Spirit needs one? Um, I don't think Sniper needs one. I think Sniper just needs to commit to damage. Like you can see here, he's building that Butterfly. I think Butterfly is going to be fantastic for him. They don't have any natural MKP. Oh, the punch comes forward and they found out Roger Dodger. So he's dead for 70 seconds. Yeah. They don't have any natural MKB pickets for Zen 9. So you can't really fight through a butterfly. You can't really get a blood thorn on anyone either. Like, he needs this Shivers, and obviously he went that nullifier, so he's not going to have another active item for a bit of time. 2,400 gold here on Baller. Talking about him potentially going something like an MKB. I mean, it's not bad, right? MKB is, is a solid item on him. He especially, he's gone at attack speed level 25 talent. 100 attack speed's pretty solid for just a free free talent. And the current damage is insane, obviously. Um, but sometimes you just need it. You just need that extra bit of attack speed. That is true. This game is starting to, to still feel extremely close. You know, both these teams... I'm how, not how letting anybody close, have an inch. How close do you reckon it is? Oh. We, can, we can have a... I would say 60% in favour of Dark Side. Ooh, I'm going to go with 67. And we're... Ooh, we're, oh, we're, we're way we're wrong. We're, we're thinking it's a bit closer than it actually is. Dota's telling us... It's Reverie's got this in the back. That is a big lead here in the Dota Plus odds. Yeah. I guess we haven't seen another fight since that mid lane. We haven't seen that BKB being used. And he's obviously yep. sitting on so much gold on both of these heroes. 6k gold on that, 5k gold on the sniper. Hell, even even Xavier's sitting on 2k. Ember's sitting on 3k. And that's all that lead. That's all that gold that's being 
held instead of being used. So that net worth lead seeming a bit, a bit funny. Well, they're going to take out this bottom shrine here, so all the shrines will be taken by Dark Sided. What else can they get? The smoke up, it looks like here from Zen 9. They're aggressing forward. Put down a nice little ward here. Baller has that blink. You don't, I don't really think they can go on Musica, Musica though. That's, that's an insanely hard kill to get. Does Musica have buyback now? I don't think he does, nah, right? He committed, he committed to this Hex, but... Honestly, you can't get picked off if you're a 3,000 health Oh, Baller, target. he blinks in towards the back. He doesn't get his BKB off early enough, but EJ uses his BKB instead. They're trying to come in. They try to take out Reverie, but he gets far enough away, so he's going to be able to sit in the back and peep himself away. He's shooting, he's shooting, and the Ravage comes Holy through Ravage. as well. That hits onto four. Here as the Sanity does a little bit, but it only gets rid of mana. It doesn't get rid of health. The, the Bar Strike comes all the way back through. Baller's inside the back, and he's going to be able to take out Reverie. It looks like it. Yes, he does. He gets rid of him, but he loses his own life for it. They've lost two on the side of Zen 9. They've lost a big core on the side of Dark Sided as well. If you're Dark Sider right now, you know he has no buyback, you know Shatan has no buyback. Do you buy back on this sniper and just go the high ground? I don't think you want to commit, right? Because then it gets to a point where EJ blinks into the back, they take you down, and then you're dead for two minutes without any yeah, buyback. It's a high risk play. They're, they're playing it safe. I think they might go for this Roshan. They really don't need the sniper to take Roshan anymore. They've got that Solar Crest, he's got that Desolator, and it's the refresh shot. Two ultis for Musica is going to be disgusting in these fights. Yeah, they come into the backside here in the replay. They were able to try and go onto the sniper, but there was so much save coming out from Dark Side. The Ravage was huge. The Saturday's Eclipse didn't do much. It got rid of quite a lot of the uh, the mana, but it just got to a point where Bala had to stand there and fight. He committed to the fight there. He wanted to get rid of the sniper, and he did. But yeah, the rest look of at that damage coming out from Razor, though. 1,100 physical damage, 1,600 total. He basically killed the sniper by himself. Yeah, so they get the Refresher Shard here onto Musica. They put the Aegis on the Halberd, Biasu. though. They're losing the Halberd, which is a huge loss. I think he might trade the Phaser's Boots out when he actually fights. Yeah, I could see that happening. I would if I was him. Well, did he Rune picked up here by EJ. This game is on a knife edge. Well, that's the thing. For for Darkseid, you're sitting pretty, pretty comfortable. You've got all these buybacks back. Like, you don't have to worry too much. And on the other side, you're looking... No buyback, no buyback. They're really not wanting to buy back, and Roger's buyback obviously is not as strong as he wants it to be. Oh, the Lincolns gets popped, and AJ blinks forward. Doesn't get the hex out because that side of fist was going here from Biasu, so they're just going to force themselves into the trees and get the TPs away. But they've got double ravage. They're sitting. They're sitting outside this base right now. I think they want to commit. They want to commit to a huge fight right before Bala gets up. EJ cannot get if EJ gets oh, picked in the, the game. Hex is comes completely forward. They over. have the Raj, they get in one. Do they use the second? They do. Music has picked up EJ. He has the buyback if he wants to use it, but Shatan doesn't. He's dead for another 78 seconds. They had to use the false promise here on Roger Dodger, and it looks like Dark Sider. They don't even need Reverie. He's come back in now. They take out Riz and Zen 9. They're crumbling inside of their base. Doing so much damage. Baller on the backside. He's trying to take out Reverie and he does. He's still HP after this BKB. And how much more damage can Baller do? They do get the hex out, so they've taken out one life gear from Bowser. The ice Path is creating a little bit more space here for Dark Side. Bowser wants to come back in here with his BKB. How much damage can he do here to Baller? Because again, he still doesn't have that buyback. Baller getting stuck inside the Astral Prism at the resets, but the blink away. Nice little play there, and they have the Sanders Eclipse. He's going to drop the hammer, takes away quite a lot of their mana, but doesn't take away their HP. Reverie is walked back into this fight, he uses his BKB. He wants to get rid of this OD who did buy back into this fight. So a lot has been committed from both these teams. No real net gain for either of them. What a fight. Zen 9 on the brinkmanship right there. Could have just lost the entire game so quickly. They managed to clutch it out. Managed to get that sniper kill. Managed to get Baosu killed with that Aegis. They committed a lot. You can see here the buybacks coming out. But you held the base. And that's that's what's got to matter. Like you you got to live to fight another day. And you can see here now, Ray's is starting to skyrocket on this net worth. Reverie really is start kind of stalled. With that buyback, he really lost a lot of gold. Yeah. And Baller's I mean, starting to get big. Baller's really starting to put this game on his back. He's got that nullify. He has that Orchid. He's going to go for a Bloodthorn very early on. And, man, it really starts to feel like Baller's gone. I'm not losing 2-0 to Dark Side. And I am winning this game for myself, for my team. And he's really starting to bring it back together. This game looked like it was over and done very early on. But now, it looks like Zen 9. They're making their comeback. They're getting these fights that they need. Roger, with the double no. average, it doesn't even look like they can get anything done. But they found Roger Dodger. The Hex comes forward here. But the rest of Zen 9, they're all ready. Out comes the nullify. But the Ravage hits again. They've hit onto three of these heroes. How much damage can they do? They're so gosh done tanky on Zen 9. But I don't think they're tanky enough. EJ, he's 
dead for two minutes. Bouse is looking for more. The false province comes out here onto the ball. Top Zeno, he's the one that goes down. But that's all you're losing here for Darkside. And you're more than happy, especially when you get rid of EJ for 110 seconds. Shatan, he finds himself another Invis rune. How much damage do they have? How much reveal do they have? They have more than enough. And they have more than enough damage to get rid of Shatan. Buy back here on Tobbs. They want to finish this game. Dark sided. They want the 2 0 against Zen 9, and I think they've just cracked it open. They're definitely feeling themselves, that's for sure. And Zen 9 are really struggling. You saw they got everything they wanted. They found Musica by himself, but they didn't have enough stuff. Can they lock. find Riz? Looks like they don't get the, the TP oh, they get cancel, the but they get the hex off because of the visage. From the Assassinate, they get so much vision and they oh, get rid of Riz. This is a disaster. He's got no buyback either. He's not even close to buyback. He's. He's in strife right now. No buyback for five minutes. Obviously down for 60 seconds on EJ's OD. How many Raxes do you lose right now? Is it one, is it two, or is it all of it? I think you lose the game here. There's 90 seconds without a Darks here. I guess there is 50 seconds until they have EJ. How much heavy lifting can Baller do? Can he put this game on his back? I can don't he think hold? you lose everything. I think you're going to lose two Raxes quite comfortably. 28 seconds... Then you've got Shatan coming up. You obviously got to wait that 40 seconds, but do they commit? They don't commit for the tier fours. They're just going to want to take these Raxes. So they get rid of the Raxes and look how quickly they get rid of them too. The Death Slayer on Biasu, the damage from Reverie. They tear through these buildings. They've gotten one lane. They're going to get two, and it do looks they like they're going to get all three. three. They're going to go in forward for more. Yeah, they want to try and get the Mega Creeps. They're going to have Ravage back up by the time they're going to fight. This could be an absolute problem for Zen 9. They can't fight into this Ravage. They really don't want to jump on Bowser right now. He's one of the few people with buyback that can actually get back into that fight easily. But they play it safe. They back off. They'll wait for next Roche. So it looks like Darksider, they play it safe. EJ is respawning. Yes, they don't have Riz, but I think it's perfectly fine. They get two whole lanes of racks. There's only one lane of racks in between them and Mega Creeps. And I think they cracked this game wide open after those last couple of fights. Well, yeah, look at that. It's... It was looking so stable, but it's just those little things. Riz getting picked off in the bot lane made everything possible for them. That one pick off, getting that hex off, music, it just clutches it out, and it works out well for them. Yes. Double racks. It's not over yet, though, because we've looked at 50-minute games with mega creeps, and it's not over. 50-minute game with only two racks of super creeps? Definitely playable if you're Zen 9. Yeah, so but Shatan nine. can't get picked here. Shatan has to be playing it safe. They are playing this to the best of their ability and Zen 9, they are not out of it just yet. They are behind by 15k, they are behind by a little bit less than 20 kills. So, yeah, we're gonna is this next Roche the, the next big well, fight linchpin? The thing is, it's an Ags, and I honestly think you give it to Ember to give him a slot. Yeah. Because no one else, like Darksider, yeah, Musica might be pretty good for it. Tuskies is trash. Snipers is actually a bait, it does less damage, I reckon. Yeah. Um, you could give it to Tobbs, I guess, but none of the axes are that good. They don't really secure the team fight. So do you just save 2,000 gold well, on Ember Does he have the uh, Macropy Pieces immunity? Oh, does he? Does he have that? No, nah, he went the ice part. Oh, okay. Actually. So, and um, Bowser, he's he's by himself. He could get picked off if he's not. Oh, he's played it smart. He's jumped out. Very quick fingers there on the remnant. Gets himself far enough away. And I think I would have to agree with you there with the Ags if uh, Dark Side were the ones to pick it up. What about Zen 9? Who's the one that gets the Aghanim Tepter for them? Well... None what? of them are great either. <laughs> That's the thing. So, like, I think you give it to... OD. Well, the OD's double, double actual is pathetic. Yeah. Um, I Oracle honestly think eh. you give it to Sand King? Yeah, the extra range could be nice. Like, the double... The parallel wall and the... Um, the extra damage? The level 25 extra damage. Like, it's... It's all right. But, honestly, this is one of those few games. You look at the lineups and you're like, yep. Yeah, no one needs it. No one wants it. So that refresher shard for that third Roshan was huge for Darkseid because they, if they would have seen that Ags, they probably would have been like, oh, no, we can't. We can't double Ravage. We can't fight anymore. And he's got a refresher shard, a refresher orb himself. So he's going to have double Ravages every single fight. I'm not sure how you live with two five-second BKBs on your entire lineup yeah. for Zen 9. Well, I mean, Ball is doing his job. He's getting to the back. And they're getting caught. Dealing, will. Oh, looks like Biasu. He's the one that gets caught out. 99 seconds on the sideline for him. He still has buyback, though. So it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world, but it really slows it down. And Roshan could be up right now. It's may respawn, three seconds. If it spawns right now, <laughs> you run for it if you're Zen 9. Force out that buyback. Force out something. And it is an, it's, a, it's a pretty slow one. Two and a half yeah. minutes. So Zen 9, they're going to start pressuring this tier 3 tower bot. But Riz, though, he has the rest of Darkseid eyeing him off. 
Dark side of the moving the way back in. The ice path does miss. Baller. He gets his TP cancelled. Yeah, a little bit Tidal unfortunate. just going to have to go for a walk. And can they high ground into shrapnels, though? He's got nine of them. He's got that butterfly. He's got no buyback, though. So he's not going to have another buyback for another minute. Maybe two and a half, three minutes by the time he actually gets that farm. Well, they're just going to try and deal with these creeps as easily as they can. And you can see that there. Reverie's just said, I don't know, buyback boys. Give me that farm. And Xavier holds that. <laughs> he holds that snowball saying, whoops. <laughs> My bad. Hey, look how farmed he is. He's rich he's as. He doesn't AC. need anything. I mean, as you said, what else does he need? What else can he get? Well, that Lotus Orb's enough, really. He just yeah. needs Lotus Orb to get rid of that Nullifier so Reverie can get his BKB off, so he can get that Shadow Blade off. Because right now, the only way he dies is getting Nullified Hexed. Oh, Paul, I gets hit by the Ice Bar. Shatan. Catch out, Musica, but Musica catches out him as well. But I mean, it's just these out of towers. It's, it's 55 minutes into the game. Darkseid, I'm more than happy to let them go. Yeah, the big thing is the net worth is starting to even out. The, obviously, the XP is going to even out because everyone's 25 and it's going to hit zero eventually. Like, who's left it to get 25 on this? Just the three. Yeah. The three's at nine. Yeah, so it's going to hit up. the point where it hits zero now. It's all in the next team fight. Can that double Ravage win them the game? Well, Darkseid, they yeah, go Everyone's got buyback. Forward. Except for Dark Sided. Yeah, is looking for more. They do get the hex out. Who is it on? It's on Ball. He gets his BKB off, so they miss the first Ravage. He has the refresher short, but he doesn't have enough mana to use the second Ravage, but it doesn't matter because he's got a second hex. The vacuum comes all the way forward. The four stuff doesn't get himself high enough up onto the high ground, and he uses the wall here so they don't get much more. On the backside, Ball. In the he doesn't have any BKB. He's already dead. He has the buyback if he wants to use it. He's going to use it straight away. The war is punching the air from Shatan, and the buyback's come quick and fast here from Zen 9. So Dark Sided, they're hitting the abort button. They want to get out. They don't want to be anywhere near Zen 9 right now. The DD has spawned in front of Roshan. 10 seconds left on the Roshan as well. Do they stay around for it? I don't think so. Or oh, Bouse is going to check it. Roshan, though. Bouse is going to check it. Oh, it's he just, just went away from it. Tobbs, throw the ice path in there. Look for it, boy. <laughs> Doesn't look like anybody's going to see Roshan spawn. It has spawned oh, just now. Does Bouse get caught here again? Is this the mistake that you're looking for for Zen 9? If they catch him, this could be huge. He He's got to play safe. He can't be caught out here again. Not like this, Bowser. <laughs> They're trying to combine on him, but oh, he does see him as he walks down the stairs. Bowser with the quick fingers there on the remnant, so they're going to smoke up. They're going to try and wrap around the rest of Zen 9 here. They're going to go into the Roche Pit. They're going to find that it's up. It's DD still up. The DD, He's got about five seconds left of the DD. Does he take it as quick as he can? Yeah, they Rebel's do. They're going, going for it, and it is getting team. wiped. They have the Solar Crest, they have the Tag Team, look how much damage that they tag do Tag Team do. Deso Solar Crest, plus the last tail end of that DD. And let's see who the Ags goes to. Who's I'm sure gonna it's going to be on Biasu, as you said, so he gets a slot. No, nah, oh, Tusk has Tusk nah. got it. He's the one that's got it. Okay, so they want the Walrus Kick here. I think that's fair enough, actually, because you see a BKB target. Oh, and you can kick them away from You can the kick sniper. them away, yeah. So I think that's fine. It's the best of bad ulties. Like, they're, 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 all of them are pretty bad. Musicus doesn't really get used as much as you can because it's great. The AoE gush obviously is fantastic, but there aren't many times where. Oh, they found needs one. It looks like they found Riz yet again. He does get kicked up into the air, but he gets punched up yet again, and the assassinate takes him down. So he has buyback if he wants to use it, but oh, oh my god. He's got God. that 25. He's got the walrus punch. He didn't use the kick. He just has that cooldown walrus punch. <laughs> he can just get it randomly. He gets lucky on the very first hit and cleans up Riz. There's only one lane of racks left here for Zen 9. EJ's trying to push that bottom, trying to create a little bit of space, but this tier 3 tower is going to go down. Yeah, and now all the buybacks are back. You the Darks here uses the buyback. They get the Barashrack and the Hex out on top. Oh, they're going to get rid of Bouncy. They do. He buys back. He can get straight back into this fight if he wants to. So the Refresher Orb comes out here from Amusuke. He uses the second Ravage here, but Baller, he has his BKB for both of them. And Shatan, he's the one that's going to go down. There's so many walls down. There's so many illusions. Can they deal with these heroes? Bouncy coming back into this fight. There's 120 seconds without Shatan. Dark side, they still have all five of their players, but they're going to lose Musica on the sideline here. They use the Sanities for that. Not quite sure why he's coming back in. That. He's got a refresh shot. He's got another Ultimate. He has the boots of travel as well, so he gets himself back into this fight. EJ comes in. The Hex comes out, there, out, out into Baosu. EJ, he needs to get himself away. How much can they save their OD? But he gets hit there. He gets hit by the Ravage and the Ice Path on top. How much damage do they have? It looks like a lot. EJ has to send himself into the Astral Prison. Does he get himself away? I don't think he does. He's stuck between a lot of the Bowser Dark Side of members. He's just standing still. Bowser just DC to stop oh. the kill. 
<laughs> Everything's going wrong for Bowser in the last second of the game. Oh. Is that enough to bring you back for Zen Knight? Because that is a dead EJ. That is straight up. He is gone. He had buyback, but he would have straight up died then. Oh. What a disaster for Dark Sided. <gasps> that oh. is extremely unfortunate because, as you said, Wogga, Bowser was more than likely going to kill EJ there. They lose the Aegis on the backside. He had so them both. He had He's slight, dead. He had chains. He would have 100% died. And now you got to wonder, can they defend? Can they defend without Shatan? They've got no They've got no Riz double ult. They've obviously got no hammer for quite some time. No BKBs for about 25 seconds. Baller is thrown up into the air. He has stolen quite a lot of damage here from Revry, but when he respawns, it won't matter to him. They don't have the Sanity's Eclipse. They've got nothing left. So we oh. see the fight as it comes back in. Biasu gets deleted. The Ravage hits onto a few of those heroes, but it's not enough. It looks like it. They had to use two of them, but it hit onto BKB. It hits Shatan in the tail end, though. That is the big thing. He dies there by himself. No buyback. And that's, I think, the kill that you really wanted. But, oh. <laughs> How does this game go? This is... This these pauses in these team fights are horrible, all right? This is never what you want as a player because you want to be able to, to use your brain in the moment to try well, and, and outplay it. too opponent. late. That was the problem. The, the, this pause actually doesn't help anyone. No one's going to be happy with this because Darksider can't get the kill anymore and Zen 9 are like, yeah, we made it out and now we have five minutes to prep for what exactly? Especially because Baller is currently in the middle of a Yules. He has no BKB. And Tobbs is throwing an ice path directly underneath his feet. Actually, no, he's missed the ice path. So I think Baller uh, might be able to run away from I think from he this. might edge that. I can't quite see with the, um, obviously, the respawn coming in. But again, Sniper's going to respawn. He's still got his BKB. He committed both of these spells. He's got no ultimate coming. All oh, two seconds on false promise. <laughs> two seconds to save How your boy. How close is he? Is he going to turn around? Uh, he ha Roger has to turn oh, around, right? He, he's close enough. He, he has to get to about here. He has to get to about that spot here to, to get it. If he can get to that, just there, he'll be able to get it. So he has to make, what, 250, 300 units to get the ultimate off to save his boy. And the problem is, you can just kick him away. He might, he might not even make the base. He might just get kicked back into the oblivion and then die. <laughs> well, I have to see oh, this team fight. They've had to use the buybacks quick and fast from both these teams. There has been a lot of buybacks used in this fight. EJ doesn't have his... Actually, no, he does have buyback, so this, this OD can still have two lives. Musica doesn't have his, Biasu doesn't have his. Uh, who else has buyback? They have buyback here on Roger Dodger, they have buyback on Xavier, and they have buyback on Reverie. So, it's not like this game is over if Sniper dies or if EJ yeah. dies. I mean, the big thing if is If Baller dies, that's bad. Tobbs is 70 away, so if anything goes down, like any tower, this Rax... I mean, this Rax is probably not going to die, but... Anything, guys, he's got the traps back in, and he's a huge part of their push. That liquid fire is so good, especially because they've still got this fortify. And the fortify makes that split shot now. Liquid fire still cancels that. No matter what, doesn't do the damage, but it stops that auto attacking down. And creeps are important, especially when these fights are so chaotic. Anything can happen, and if a creep wave just sits on your racks, you lose the racks, and you don't even realize, and you can't defend it. There is a creep wave coming in here for Darkseid, and as you said, if creep wave does just sit in and whack into these uh, raxes, it can be bad for you. The Darksided. How does this go for them from here? Obviously, it looks like Sniper's dead. So, uh, this is the thing. They've had all this window to realise, oh, wait, Bala's behind everyone. <laughs> like, why are we fighting over here? Like, EJ, okay, he got away because Bowser DC'd. Yeah. But, let's just go over here. I've got the Searing Chains. I've got the Remnants. Like, he's just going to jump straight over here. He's going to try to kill this Razor. And if Razor goes down, two minutes without your Shatan sinking, two minutes without your Razor, can you defend off the back of EJ? Can I would have just... said yes if he had the Sanity's Eclipse, but he doesn't. He well, doesn't you have, have that the big wall either. You don't have those double walls. He committed to the Refresher then. He bought out everything. He's He's got the Hex at least. So he, he'll have a Hex in about five seconds. But is that? I don't think it's enough. I actually think this is going to be a huge delay. Bows is just sitting there laughing his head off for like, haha, I'm going to make N9 wait all this time and we're going to still beat them. <sighs> I don't this know. Is... It's just, it's looking so, it's topsy turvy. You can see all the bounces up and down. And it comes down to this this last hurrah. Because Darkseid are going to commit everything. They're, yep. they're not going to let this base stay alive. Yep. They're going to either die in the base or let it, like, yep. just end the game. Yep. They, there's too much at stake here. They're one nil up. This is it. This is the, they get to go home. They just <laughs> they don't want to be here anymore. They've picked the winning draft. They've played it exceptionally well. 
Musica, Reverie, and Xavier have made so much space. Tobbs is doing such a fantastic job not getting caught out. And we've talked about how many times Pos 5 is getting caught out. It's not the end of the world, but it's really sad to see. Like, yep. Roger's been caught out 10 times. Well, man, I think about eight of them have been like straight up pickoffs. Yep. He's died a few times in team fights, and his ultimate is so crucial. Suddenly, you can't smoke gank. You can't fight anymore. You have to just bail out. You have to just let them take a tier two. You have to just see what happens. Yeah, well, we're going to have to see what happens because we do have Bowsu back in the server, boys and girls. We're going to wait for this game to be on pause and see where it all ends up. Baller, he's in the backside. He's you'll set it up all the way up into Everyone's the air. Dark side of the eye coming into him, but they had the false promise. Do they get it down? Yes, they do. So Baller, he's getting stuck inside his arse shard. He's getting pumped up into the air. The snowball comes forward. Can Dark Side finish this? They kick EJ back into his fountain. They say, see you later, my friend. You're not coming back into Rich this is fight. Die well. Rich just he dies said here. that's two minutes on the sideline for him. Reverie, he has to buy it back, but it doesn't matter because because he has the buyback. There's three heroes on the sidelines for Zen9 who have no buybacks. And it looks like EJ, he's the man of the hour. Can he get Dark Side he's out of his base? He's going down. And I don't think River he can. The Glimmer Cape, <laughs> no, he gets saved. He has to use the Astro Imprisonment finally with the buyback here from Roger Dodger. But I think this is game. I think that's it. They have the buyback here on EJ. Can they get the Mega Creeps? It looks like they can. They don't have Bowser for another 100 seconds, but Dark Side, they can. Are Dark Side backing? No, surely not. They're going to back. It's 2v4. They've committed Xavier. He's going to die. Oh, here. he's going to die inside of the base as well. That's two buy diebacks here on the side of Dark Side. They get the Mega Creeps and I think we're going to go for another round boys because Dark Side, they don't want to end just yet because EJ seems like a monster inside of that Zen 9 base. Oh my god. What a defense from EJ though. Oh my god. Like he should have been able to it was 2v4. Yep. He was sitting there like, boys, I don't know what to do. I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm panicking. I'm just going to hit anything near me. And he just keeps him alive. Yes, you've been Mega Creep. Yes, you committed every single buyback you have, but you held. They you held. lived to fight another day, another fight. I don't know if you can win the next fight. They're going to wait six minutes. They're going to get their buybacks, and it's going to be a 10v5 or maybe a 10v6-7 fight because obviously the amount of buybacks you won't be able to get for Zen 9. But it's how long can they hold against these Mega Creeps? They don't really have the greatest ways of uh, pushing out these well, lanes. And this as you said, in the game, I think Sand King can do a lot of it. Razor obviously is pretty good, and the new the new talents for uh, not the new talents, the new spell for um, OD. He can push out the lane pretty decently. You can see like it's AOE now. He's doing a decent little chunk of damage. Well, Zen Nine. The Ancient hasn't gone down just yet. They still have their tier fours, but they have to deal with nah. these Mega Creeps pushing inside of the base. It's going to be hard for them to try and win this game, but it still is not over just yet. The Aeon Disc is coming out now for the Sniper. What's the next set of items here for both these teams? They've got Boots of Travel 2 here on Music <laughs> uh, Moon, Moon I mean, This is one way to deal with the Nullifier, but the problem is you're going to get orchided. You're going to actually then BKB on top of that, and then the Nullifier is going to come out after the Aeon Disc. It's going to be a bit iffy. Um... Heart, I guess. I mean, yeah. He's been a tanky Music, front music is done. That's the thing. He, he can't get another item from here. I think, effectively, he's just going he to save for his next buyback right? in four and a half minutes. Yeah, and he's going to Because he's not going to get eventually. main preference on farm. Um, Baosu's going to eat this very soon. He's got that extra 2k gold. But you um, still need an item to replace it, though, right? Like, you can't just flat out eat it because then you're missing the stats. I honestly think he could just go a rapier. Yeah, all in on the last fight. If he wants to play it safe, Daedalus. Well, here it Zen is. Zen 9 are not playing it safe. They want to get more. Baller blinks forward. He has that bigger beast. It looks like EJ has to use his, but out comes the Hex. How much damage can they do here against the, the Zen 9 using team? The ravage that is, is a nice out. little Ravage, and they do get the vacuum on top as well. The Redman comes Another all the way forward. One. That's a double Ravage. Hitting onto both of these Zen 9 heroes. Riz is quite tanky. He gets the second wall out as well. There's so many of these illusions. How much can they do? They get rid of Xavier. Can they get rid of Musica as well? No, it looks like they can't, but with the E-Blade on the backside, they get rid of him. EJ, he's dead as well for two minutes. It's Bows who's trying to run away from the rest of Zen 9. And that was an even fight if I've ever seen one. But Reverie, he's dead. Ball has picked him up on the backside. Yeah, the problem is you don't get... You don't Bowser, Bowser. he's keeping towards the base. He wants to try and put pressure on a baller, but baller, can he find him? No, he can't. The Remnant all the way back to the Greek wave. I like that, actually. He forces baller to go back to the base. He's just like, you know what? Stuff you. You have to commit your TP. And the problem is... He already had used this TP to get into the fight, so he has to use his boots to travel. He can't now push the lanes out. Yes, you lose three heroes. Yes, it's pretty rough to do, but you've got the Mega Creeps. You've got that safe line of defense. And look how far out they're pushed. Like, you got the mid camp here. The bot lane took a tier four. You lost a tier four on that fight. 
everything went right for you and you still lost a tier four and you you lost two of your courts. You take out their their carry, which is the big one. It's it's such an iffy fight for Zen Nine. Like that that was the perfect fight for them. They did everything right. E Blade, perfect. Glimmercape, perfect to keep EJ alive. Then the ultimate comes out on top of the double ravage to keep him alive for another eight to ten seconds. And you you didn't even you didn't even clean him. You didn't even clean them. And that's the unfortunate part here. When you start to lose these early games, you start to lose these racks as early on. You get mega creeped, although it did take 58 yeah. minutes for them to do it. But now you have to keep dealing with this. This is where Zen 9 need to be playing leagues above Dark Side to try and win this game. You need to make sure that your creep waves are pushed out. You need to make sure that your team fights are a lot cleaner than theirs. Yes, you are getting the kills on Reverie. Yes, you are getting the kills on Musica. But it means all for naught if these creeps are start to put a bash in your base because you can't get anything back off it. Yeah, it's... It's just a rut. You're in a rut. That's that's the mega. It creep is an special. uphill battle right now for Zen Nine. They have a lot to get over, but they're doing it the right way. They are starting right, and this is where they can start making this comeback. Because if they keep winning these fights like this, you know, maybe the next fight EJ lives as well as Baller. Maybe the next fight Riz lives as well, and that's when they start getting this uh, net worth advantage and they start pulling it back. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you need at least two more fights, but the problem is one one mistake, one mistake, and Darkseid just clean your base because you've got no backup. You've got one T4 that's going to get wiped by Mega Creeps. And honestly, if you're fighting under their shrine, that's pretty good. But as soon as they get a fight where you get jumped on and someone gets blown up first... Because you look, Xavier got blown up before he really did anything. Like, everything he has was off cooldown. He didn't get a single spell off. He just kind of just jumped in, tried to snowball, and just got stunlocked in between the two um, walls. If that doesn't go that way and he actually gets anything off, it's a completely different fight. Well, Biasu has reconnected back in here, so we'll be able to get back and find the titillating end that will be this Zen 9 and Dark Side of game. Because, I mean, me and Matt have been seeing this evolve over the last couple of weeks, and it's Australian Dota and going an hour plus. You know, I was thinking, okay, today it's not going to happen. That first game, Zen 9, Dark Side of Dark Side, it was a, it was a lot more clinical win. But this game. We pushed the hour mark again. I don't know if it's me and you casting together, Woglet, or if it's the Australian Dota scene just wanting to play hour-long games. But, man, I'm starting to get sick of it going an hour long. I just want to take it closer. This is fun. Like, think, about, think about what can go wrong here for both teams. Like We could have another hour-long game on top of this one. <laughs> we could be here till 10 p.m. for all we know. It's I mean, more Dota is better for everybody. The Titanic is picked up here from Baller, but this is where it, you know, we get to these hour-long games, and this is where it comes down to one mistake, right? You know, one player makes one mistake, one player gets caught out, one player doesn't have buyback, one player doesn't look at their map, you know. I mean, look at that. It's a wave of red buybacks, and then... Oh, Tobbs. Tobbs. <laughs> what a legend. Tobbs is holding it down for everyone. <laughs> But yeah, nobody has buyback in this game except for Tobbs. Ballers is cooling down, so he just needs to get a little bit more gold. So he's replaced his Sanjin Yasha for a Satanic. That's the big thing. So Ballers going to have buyback in the next fight. Like He's he's going to get the gold. That's yep. just going to happen. He, all he has to do is sell his Sanjin Yasha in his future. Yeah. I don't know if he wants to sell his Sanjin Yasha. I think he wants that Sanjin Yasha over the traps. So oh, in a team fights. fight. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be another Roshan fight. Who gets the free axe in? Bowsu? He has found out Baller. The Searing Chains keeps him locked in place. Oh, that's a lot of damage. That was a crit. And he does go to Daedalus. He goes to the Accent. He does do exactly what I yep. thought. Um, completely buys out too because he has no buyback. He won't he's have buyout down. for like four minutes though. That's a lot of gold to farm. That's the big thing. So he's going to have to start taking waves over everyone. With those double slide of fist charges, he is doing quite a lot of work. He didn't go to the remnant recharge, which is usually what I think you do with the Ags, right? Well, that's I mean, the he, double slide of fist is went really the Ags, good. But he went the damage, so he went the yeah. Deso Daedalus. And right now, what do you have to do? You have to blow someone up yeah. before that ultimate comes out from Roger. And the double slide of fist is definitely doing that. He can crit for like 1,100. We just saw what happened up here. They did about 40% of Bala's health pull. Imagine if anyone was behind him. That's a dead Bala. That is true. So who's feeling better about this game? Obviously, Darksider will probably be feeling pretty good about their Mega Creeps, but they're starting to lose these fights a little bit harder, right? Well, they've lost that, they lost that one fight bot lane, but I think you can chalk that up to the fact that you got picked off. And yep. the fact it went 3-2 to two despite you getting completely picked out of out of place. Like, you weren't ready for that. Tobbs wasn't ready. Xavier wasn't in, in a good position. You only lost three people. Your Megas took the Tier 4 anyway. It's gonna it's gonna be definitely dark side of favoured for the rest of the game, no matter what the team fights look like. 
Yeah, well, Zen 9, they're doing their darn just to try and keep these creeps outside of their base. They're doing a pretty good job at it, but it looks like a team fight is happening here. The Ravage hits on a three of these heroes. They hit out on EJ. If he goes down, this could be really bad for them. The side of Fist doing so dead. much work. He gets hexed, but the BKB gets out. He force stances himself away, but he doesn't have the false promise. How much damage can the rest of Zen 9 do? The Saturn's Eclipse does a lot with the Refresher Shard as well as the Double Wall. They're doing so much work against Darkseid. It comes into the backside. Baller, he wants to get this kill. He's going to be able to get out Tobs and Baller. He's already taken out the Tusk, and they want to get on top of Reverie, and they have found him with the Hex on top, but so much damage comes out from this Razor. The Surge all the way forward, he needs auto attacks oh, and he gets the through the Butterfly. And that's three going down already. Music is trying to push these Mega Creeps into the base, but Zen 9, that's a clean fight for them. <gasps> oh, the Burrow Strike, Shatan doesn't go far enough. He doesn't catch out the Tide Hunter, and the only ones that are left alive are Musica and Bowsu, but Zen 9, they lose Roger, and they're perfectly happy with that because Baller is putting this team on his back no. and he's carrying them to victory. No buybacks used. That's a fantastic fight. That's the fight you needed for Zen 9 because you forced out a big fight. You only lost Roger. But the net worth is only at 4K now. The big part of this was Musica ran out of mana. You could see here, he had that double ravage that whole time. He was holding it, holding it, holding it. The, and the hammer, hammer comes out, and all of a sudden he has no mana again. That feels like it's really hard for these heroes to get stuff done when the hammer does come out. We saw Reverie on that OD being able to kill people with that hammer, but EJ's using it to get rid of the mana. And as we said, if Musica doesn't have mana to use Double Ravage, there's no point having this Refresher Shard. Yeah, I have a feeling this Refresher Orb isn't going to work out for him because it costs a thousand mana to do, and he's using the Hex as well, which is another 250. So I think he needs to start switching that out for something else. He needs to get a mana item, but it looks like Zen 9 for the first time this game. They're able to chip away at these tier 3 towers. <laughs> Baller, though, he's getting gone on. They do use the Ashland Prison to keep him away. He has that bigger B when he comes back in. The buyback comes thick and fast. Oh, the tusk. But with out. the Ravage on top, Baller, he gets caught. He has buyback, though, so 100 seconds until he gets to come back. Xavier does use the buyback. They're going to trade Oh, they found Riz. They found Riz towards that shrine. Do they have enough to get on top of him? No, with the Surge all they fought. Oh, the Revenant is going a heap oh, fast, he but misses. no. The Slider Fierce does miss there by Baosu. So, to double buyback from Tobbs and Xavier there, but you killed Bala. The Roche is up, and you're going to take it again. And this time, you're going to have two Ravages, because you're not going to have that Refresher shot, yep. uh, refresher Orb cooldown. You're not going to have that extra mana. Oh, Baller does buy back. The dice game comes out. They're EJ, they want to come in here. Baller comes forward. This ward is providing so much vision. He comes all the way in. Does he have that BKB? The Hex comes out. This is a big old Ice Path as well. Keeping him in position. The Astral pri uh, Prison keeps him alive for a little bit longer. The fact is they have Roger now, so he can use that False Promise. He has to use that having BKB having and the False Promise. A All big bait right. coming out from Darkseid and forcing some cooldowns. And now they want to fight. I don't think you lost much there because he still hasn't committed this... Oh. The Bar Strike forward does catch out with the Hex on top as well. Shatan's getting caught out. The uh, Assassinate is doing a little bit of work. They're just creating so much base. They're trying to duck in and out. Seeing who can bait who into using a item or a spell in the wrong way. They're holding this so hard, this Refresher Rob. If he had to just Refresher Rob Ravage, that might have been a completely different fight. But he wants to be patient. He wants that double ult for the Roshan fight. He knows the BKB is going to be up about the same window. Oh, the Lincolns gets popped there, but it do come forward. EJ wants to try and get a kill. He gets a Hex out here on a Biasu, but how much damage can they do? EJ is getting caught out. So much damage going out from Biasu. The False Promise comes in as well. The Bar Strike from Zen 9. They're trying to create the space. Do they have enough to keep EJ alive? This Burst, I think he's going to die to the False Promise. He comes back out, and it looks like he's alive he's for now. Biasu's and they dead. drop the hammer. Biasu's dead again. Referee dies as well on the backside. He has to use the buybacks, and the Bar Strike comes forward, keeping everybody stunned in place. But Biasu, he's got the damage with the slider of Fist. They get rid of Zen 9. They're looking this for more now. is still so more. even. Who's coming forward? It looks like Zen 9. They get the buybacks coming forward. Baller wants to come in onto EJ. Biasu, if you go forward, if you get caught out, you don't have any more buyback. The Refresh Orb comes in. in from Ravage. And they're going to throw it out, but the Astro Prison dodges it. Baller's going to be safe inside of that for a little bit longer, but he has the BKB coming back in with the walls on top. Zen 9, how much damage can he do? They're going to be able to take out Musica on the backside. They do get the disarm He's out the onto OD. The so they get rid of Musica, but there's no Xavier for two minutes here. Zen 9, they're starting to win the War of Attrition, but they have to be careful of their base. These Mega Creeps are pushing harder and harder. They did use all their buybacks, and Xavier's dead for 110 seconds. Can they still contest the Roshan? And it's a DD outside. Oh. oh, this is it. This is what you want. If you're looking at... If you're a Darksider fan, that DD is absolute godsend for you. Yeah, sometimes RNGesus blesses you, and the DD rune in the hands of Biasu will be able so to chop down Roshan This will be a quicker. refresher. This will be an Ags on Musica as well, I believe. Yeah, he yep. takes the Ags synth. They're looking for a fight still. Oh, they have the refresher. Maybe you're going to use it for double BKBs. 
They did give it oh. to Musica. Yeah, that is the safe bet. I think he has that as the first priority, so you definitely get double ulti off. No matter what happens, you get the double ulti off, and then you switch out your normal refresher orb, yep. so it costs mana. But these fights are so close. Look at all these di Look at all the buybacks. <laughs> buyback, buyback, buyback. They're all such a long cooldown as well, and they're all scattered around. So it's not even like one team has five buybacks up at the same time. They're all such scattered. They're never going to be all up at the same time. The biggest thing here for Zen9 is they're the ones with the two buybacks. They have the buyback on AJ, and they have the buyback on Roger as well. Roger's playing it pretty safe. Um, he's building a Mjol there, so he wants to be able to push the wave out. We've, we've talked about Tier 4. The other one did go down in that time. You've got these two little sacks here that aren't going to really do anything, these towers. They're just going to soak a little bit of time here so they can make sure that they can try and win a team fight and they don't just lose their Ancient for it. But Zen9, they always have to keep their eyes backwards. They need to make sure they're keeping an eye on their Ancient because, yeah, they might be winning these fights against Darkseid, but Darkseid, they have the Mega Creeps on their side. They have... Their creeps pushing harder and harder than what the Zen 9 creeps do because they don't even have super creeps in any lane. Yeah, and they're getting stronger. Like, by the minute, they're slowly getting more powerful, slowly going to overpower these lanes. And you can see where they are. Like, every single time we f see these fights, the lanes are pushed past that point. They're never past the river for Zen 9. And you can see here, Shatan's all the way back here. He can't fight right now. And Musica is posturing, looking for something. Yeah, he is. With that uh, refresher orb cooling down, I believe he's just going to switch the shard into his. He might Main not. Infantry. He might want to use the mana. He's got the BKB now, so he can't get hammered. That's yep. a brand new BKB. That's fresh. That's the no Lincolns though on Ember. That's a high risk play, obviously with the, the ages. But everything is so. It's just on the knife's edge this entire time. This has been 30 minutes of just knife edge Dota. Yep. Anything can go wrong. One team can lose instantly. And you know the worst thing is, I think they win the game if Bowsy doesn't DC. Yeah. I just straight up think that was the win they had. And well, Dark Sided, been... they are smoked up towards the top side. If they get a fight inside of the base here, Zen 9 could completely Reverie's crumble. not ready yet. They can't take this fight. This would have been the perfect pick off on EJ, but Reverie's just not ready. He's farming. He's not coming at all. Reverie's hitting those creeps there, making sure he gets that net worth. Looks He's like not close he... to buyback. Four more minutes. He has a Rapier queued up as well. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like the Rapier pick up. I think a Moonshard's just safe and stable. He's doing enough damage. He doesn't need the Rapier right now because in these team fights, it's not about damage. It's about them getting on top of you. So if you can get the Moonshard, get that extra auto attack, get that range. Oh, They've I hear a punch coming out. They have to use the Astral Prism. That's Baller that's stuck inside here. The BKB comes out here from Music. He's going to throw the Ravage up, but it hits onto nobody because they're all BKB'd up. Z9, they're winning out here. The Epicenter and the Barrow Strike. They've taken out Baosu. They get rid of the Ages. Can they kill him a second time? On the sideline, EJ's getting fairly low. And on the sidelines, they are peeping away. And Bala they get rid died. of Bala. He's dead for two minutes. And this is so close to the base of Z9 that they have to be careful because they're ancient. It's getting whacked. He's got it's getting hit on. He has another one. He's going to come back in and they get rid of Xavier. How much damage can they do? Shatan's creating a little bit of space for the rest of his creeps. Yule set his himself up into the air. Can he get away? No, the ice path on top gets oh, rid of him. No, and that's it. two minutes gored with no Shatan. There is only a 3v4. Can Zen9 win this or a fresher orb on the sideline for Musica? He has another BKB and he has another Ravage. And they've got that Deso back. He's, he's holding the cheese instead. He, he wants those travels as well. They've got the eight, they've got the Aeon Disc still on Sniper. It's going to be such a hard defense to do. How do you how they do They have get a on glyph here for Zen 9, but I don't think it's going to matter because Reverie, he's the one that's peeping away. He wants to end this game. Riz oh making so Riz much damage. They have to use the false promise. EJ comes into the backside. He doesn't have that BKB though. He's trying to get rid of these creeps. He's trying to get rid of these heroes outside of his base. He gets chained up. And out comes the you Ice Bath. And the Ravage comes in from Musica. They're going to send Zen 9 to the beard. They're going to take the Ancient as well. The glyph comes out. Out, but I don't think it matters because four are dead on Zen 9. Four don't have buyback. The only one that's left alive is Roger Dodger. And looks like Darkseid <laughs> have finally <laughs> taken it here. 74 minutes in. And they get the 2-0 against Zen 9. The upset of the season. And oh wow. my lord, Woggy, I don't think I can deal wow. with that at all. That was 35 minutes of just absolute hen stoner. Oh, I can't believe what was happening there. Zen 9, though, kept their cool for so long. It wasn't even a slip up. It was literally... They got the Roche, they got those three Ravages, the three, the BKB purchase on Musica at the very end there was actually the lifesaver, because he was getting hammered over and over again by OD, running out of mana, and then all of a sudden, he had BKB, he gets two Ravages off, he gets that third Ravage off, he hits all three of them, and that's how they take the throne. Yeah, it just felt like a little bit of a war of, of, of attrition here, Dark Side, they were able to get those Mega Creeps around about that 50 minute mark, and that's when it started getting really hard for Zen 9, they held on for an extra 20 minutes, but... At that point, you're dealing with Mega Creeps, you're dealing with all this net worth, and it just felt so hard. They played extremely well to get rid of that Sniper, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah. Honestly, though, Zen9, 
you go into the lower bracket. We both know they can do a bit better than yeah. that. They are going to know that too. Like they played a fantastic game. They made a few slip ups here and there, but at the end of the day, dark sided. What more can I say? Like honestly, if you're a dark sided fan right now, you were probably on the edge of your seat. And like, yes, that was so close. I was like, didn't yeah. know what to do. It was insane. Just a fantastic game of Dota. What a way to end the night. Yeah, it felt really good that Dark Side were able to pull out the 2-0 here against Zen 9. That stamps them as a top three team in Australia. You know, they've been a little bit shaky in the most recent tournaments, but they're starting to put it up. They're starting to get these drafts. They're starting to get these team fights going on. And we'll have a look at the bracket here. So stage one is unfolding to be a banger. Looks like Dark Side did get the 2-0 here against Zen 9. And obviously earlier on today, if you guys didn't see that, Atletico took a very clinical win here against Shutdown. So Atletico will be taking on Dark Side in that upper bracket. And as Walgut just said, Zen 9 they're going to be dropping towards the lower bracket as well as shut down. And I mean, Zen 9, they're, they're going to be pretty okay in that lower bracket, right? But they're going up against Flashpoint, which is going to be hard I mean, for them. Flashpoint versus shutdown honestly could have gone either way as well. So Zen 9 definitely definitely have a hard, hard bracket to come through, but they're going to be confident. They're a fantastic team. It is a shame. Someone's going to look back and see that 2-0 against Darkseid and think, oh, they got wiped. No, those games were close. Darkseid had to earn every inch of that base to take it. Yeah, it was a really great series coming out from Darkseid. You know, as you said, the score doesn't really reflect how great of a series it actually was, but Darkseid, they're looking strong here. And Zen Knight up against Flashpoint, that's going to be another banger of a series. And yeah. I think Infinity up against Shutdown. Shutdown should be able to take that fairly simply, right? I don't know. Infinity are a good team, and they're a team that works well with time. So they've got this extra week to prep for one team. They've, got, they've looked at Shutdown, and they're like, you know what? They're a bit all over the place with the picks, the heroes that they want, and also the players. They're going to look at that and be like, we're going to target... Whoever shows up, whoever their sub that we're going to show up, we're just going to absolutely target them and just try to bin them. Yeah, and I think Infinity also, they are starting to get to a point where they're starting to be more consistent. They've figured out their drafts, and they're realizing that Philo Rules is kind of a linchpin for them. They're getting yeah. into those good situations. Woody Mo, he's playing really well in that pause one as well. We saw in that life steal where he was able to almost carry the game for his team, but it just felt like Infinity were a little bit too far behind. If they start to scrub that up, and as you said, you know, target some of those subs that Shutdown are going to be running, it's going to be you know a pretty close series. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can't wait for next week. Yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting to see next week. But, I mean, the, if you're Flashpoint and you're watching how this series goes for uh, Darkseid versus Zen9... Yo, you're a bit worried. <laughs> is, is there any uh, you know points that you're going to take from Darkseid to try and take out this Zen9 roster? Well, it shows that a well-rounded draft that all can fight together is viable against N9. We've seen how they've played for the last four years of competitive N9 into Zen9 teams. They've always had the flashy cores. They've always had Bala. They've had Zen before, and now they've got EJ. They're flashy cores. If you have a roster that can't get instantly picked off, like we barely ever saw a dark sided player just get blown up yep. before the fight started. There was a few times on Xavier before he had items, maybe once or twice on tops. That's probably the way to play. And you have five man Dota, you play 5v5, and those flashy cores don't look nearly as good when it's 5v5 instead of 5v4 or 3, or just in general, just taking little tiny picks here and there. Yeah. Well, after that wonderful series, we do have our Dare Ice Coffee MVP of the day. And it will be Musica from Darkseid. And he played an absolutely crazy tight hunter in that game. It is a classic when you think about this Musica player. Look at player. this. Three man. Three man. Just how do you fight into that if you're just getting wiped by the absolute raid boss tight hunter? Yeah, it is pretty hard, especially when we've seen teams try and ban out all these heroes, but he gets one of his classics and he shows it time and time again. He was able to come in, get a lot of these pickoffs, and every time he got that to Ravage save off, this, this is a four-man Ravage. This was huge. It was just absolutely crazy. The, the, the fact that he was able to hold a lot of these Ravages, get in, and that late BKB pick from him, realizing that he needed to mana to get all those Ravages off, and man... I don't think, you couldn't really pull apart any of this uh, dark side of roster, but I think Musica, being the shot caller, being that crazy tight hunter that he is, he just really pulled it out here for today for yeah, the dark look side. Look at the patience though, look at the patience. He's waiting for this, waiting for this BKB. They finally run out, you're like, you know what, bang. That's the time, that's the double ravage. And this fight just, they get saved by Musica every single time. They look so bad, they look so rough. And in here, three man, this is how you finish. Yeah, it is an absolutely magical day here for dark sided fans. But that is Musica from dark sided being our ice dare coffee. Uh, MVP of the day. So that, I mean, a 2-0 here for Darksided is crazy going up against Zen9. A big upset. You know, maybe people were expecting Zen9 to come out on this. Maybe a 2-1 in their way. But a 2-0 for Darksided, you've got to be feeling good if you're them going in the upper bracket. Definitely. I mean, they've had a few. They've had history with Atletico before where they've taken down Zen9. They've faced Atletico and they're like, oh, we prepped everything for Zen9. Yeah. We prepped everything to bin Bala. 
And I'm hoping something next week, some kind of mar- mar- miracle happens and it goes to a massive series, like three hour long games. But enjoy the victory now. Darkseid have to be happy. They can spend the next week with bragging rights. That's for sure. Yeah, that's the best part about taking these upset victories, right? It's all about the bragging rights. And, you know, them going up against Atletico, it is going to be one of their hardest opponents they're going to go yeah. up against. Obviously, they're going to do a lot more research. It looks like they did a lot of research into this that's game sure, against yeah. 9 Being able to take out that 2-0. And, I mean, Atletico, you're seeing this Darkseid roster and you're like, there's really not much you can kind of pick apart from the drafts. Definitely, the yeah. It comes down to the fact that you can't let them have that <laughs> the one-shot draft, yeah. I'm going to call it, where they just pick the exact same five heroes. They didn't even change the positioning of the picks. They, they have to stop that a bit. Just don't let the Warlock, don't let the Spectre, just something. Just remove something. And then you can't just let Musica just get this farm, get to the point where he has three Ravages in a team fight. It just shows how well they can play as a team. Yeah, but, you know, even Zen 9, after losing this 2-0, they're not going to be disheartened, right? You know, they're dropping in the lower bracket. You know, they probably feel like they should be in that upper bracket, but they're going to feel quite confident moving through here. Are they going to try and put it to Flashpoint and try and make a statement next week? I, I feel like they're going to try to 2-0 run the entire lower bracket. The big thing for Zen 9, they want revenge. They want revenge on Atletico. The rest of the team, they're probably not researching. They're probably looking at Atletico and be like, you know what? I'm counting down the days till we can verse you and beat you. Yeah, it would be quite nice to see the the old adages, the old guards, Zen9 going up against Atletico. But, I mean, it still is a lower bracket for Zen9. They cannot slip up from here on out. And it's going to be hard for them to try and get to a point where they can start 2 owing everybody, especially with a team like Shutdown that's in that lower bracket as well. Well, the big thing, even if they don't make it through this lower bracket, they've still got Stage 2. They've still yeah. got another chance, which is probably why they might be playing a bit risky. Like, we saw then, like, they went all in. There was a couple fights that they had zero buybacks and they still jumped at the fights. I mean, is it... St- really the the right mentality to go all in like I understand there is the stage two there is a lower bracket but I'm sure you would kind of want that cushion in the upper bracket I mean you'd love the the cushion but I've never seen anyone from Zen 9 ever be like yeah I'll sit on my laurels they're always like you know what I'm just gonna make sure you know who's the best player I'm just gonna try to jump on you and bin you and that's how they've been playing that's just how they are I mean, I feel like it's going to be, you know, kind of interesting to see how a lot of these other teams do do play in that lower bracket as well. Because as you said, you know, Zen 9 maybe have this mentality where even if they do drop to stage two, they can play through that and most likely make playoffs. Yeah. But some of these other teams, you know, like Infinity Gaming, they still have a, a kind of uphill battle to go through because it is only top two that come from this stage one that drop it down yeah. into stage two. Yeah, I think for Infinity, you've got a ridiculously uphill battle and you should learn from stage one. And then when you come to stage two, you're going to be versing a lot of the same teams. You might see a few newcomers here and there through the qualifiers. I think you have to use this lower bracket as experience. Like You might get a win here and there. You might actually take a 2-1 here and there, but it's going to be so hard to run through this entire lower bracket without the enough time to practice because it's going to be Saturday game straight into a Sunday game, which means you don't have the time to prepare for a single team like you would for an entire week like we do now for next week. Yeah. Well, it has been an absolute crazy day of Dota 2 here. Atletico were able to take out a quick 2-0 against Shutdown, but Dark Sided, they got the upset up here against Zen 9. That is it from us here in the studio. Make sure you catch us next week, Saturday, 2 p.m. for the rest of ESL AU and NZ Championship Season 4. See you then.
Remember where it started. Your first experiences. The journey you traveled. The journey you love. Remember where it started. And imagine where it will go. Rise on. Confirms it. You got hipsters. Multiple hipsters? Oh, you never get just one hipster. Ah, uh, place is riddled with them. Ah! <gasps> Three natural ingredients, 100% Arabica beans, and you're cold brewing it. What do you expect? Shoo, hipsters. Scram! Ah! So what do we do? You could try sprinkling some instant around the place. Dare cold brew. A fancier fix.